powered from the Perdomo Cigar Studios Black Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from California. It's episode 143 of the Primetime Show. Tonight, we welcome Manuel Anoa of La Aurora Cigars. In our Live True segment, we'll discuss spirits. And in our deliberation segment, Aaron and I will discuss some cigar media topics. And as always, the Primetime Show is sponsored by Saga Cigars. De Los Reyes Cigars introduces another chapter of the saga, the Saga Celez. Celez is a Spanish word that means leisure after work. In the spirit of the standing ideal of owning your own journey and making your own saga, the Saga Celez is the perfect companion to enrich those moments of choice, making them truly yours. Saga Celez carries a blend of Criollo Allure and Piloto Cubano wrapped in a selected Ecuador shade Claro wrapper that generously delivers with elegance a surprisingly rich and balanced smoke. It's available in three sizes and affordable price. Ask your retailer for Saga Celez. And by Perdomo Cigars, awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal, the Perdomo 20th Anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is a top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary blend requires tobaccos that have been carefully hand-selected and are well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th Anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan sun-grown, and a dark, oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel-aged wrappers with thick, high-priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Scar is a family-owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida, with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Exley, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo Estate Selection Vintage, the Perdomo Double H 12 Year Vintage, Perdomo 20th Anniversary, Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Champagne, Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrel Age, Perdomo La 23, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the new Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And by La Aurora Cigars in the heart of Santiago, Dominican Republic, on the rolling floor at La Aurora Cigar Factory is a section reserved only for the elite, the best of the best. These elite cigar rollers work over 10 years to simply get the opportunity to make a historic cigar. Those cigars are the La Aurora Preferido. Featuring six different wrappers and a beautifully packaged Perfecto shape, La Aurora Preferidos have been the preferred family of the Leon family for over 115 years. Take part in a legendary tradition that started the Dominican cigar industry. Look to the line, La Aurora Cigars, we are Dominican defined. And by Villegas Cigars. Since 1888, Villegas Cigars have been experts in everything tobacco, including offering a wide range of premium cigars for all connoisseurs. Villegas La Vencedora, which translates to the victor, is the first ever full-bodied Villegas cigar, and it carries a special meaning to Villegas chairman of the board, Heinrich Villegas. The La Vencedora to Mr. Villegas was, in his opinion, the arrival of Villegas cigars to the premium handmade cigar maker. It was in time, in his opinion, to push the envelope and create a legacy cigar that would serve as a proper follow-up to the highly acclaimed Villega La Florida and Glam brand. This Nicaraguan Puro, wrapped in a beautiful Nicaraguan Habano Oscuro wrapper, boasts a full-body smoky experience featuring highly seasoned and hearty flavors. Be sure to ask your retailer for La Vencedora, and you can visit Villager's entire line of premium cigars at www.villagercigars.com. And by... Drew Estate. Check out and download the Drew Dipple map for your mobile device. Keep up with everything going on Drew Estate. Experience the subculture that is the rebirth of cigars. Available on iTunes or Google Play. For more information, check out www.drewdiplomat.com. And as always, the primetime show streaming is sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate for all of our shows. Welcome, everybody. This is Primetime, episode 143. Today is Thursday, June 18th, 2020. This is Will Cooper. I am in the Perdomo Cigar Studio, joined uh, cross country in the gym. In the gym. In the gym by my co host, Mr. Aaron Loomis. It is 95 degrees outside right now. I'm not going to smoke and sit in the heat. So I'm going to do the show from the house tonight. Okay, from the gym. <laughs> That's right. I, <laughs> I don't blame you. Um, I tell you, it, but we had the opposite problem. I mean, I'm telling you, we had a cold wave here um, Monday and Tuesday this week. We were in the mid-50s at night. Um, it was almost borderline putting the heat on in here, um, which is rare for June. Um, and now it's starting to creep back up to normal June temperatures today. That's good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, we have a big drop tomorrow, so it's like just like this one day hit of heat. Just yeah, yeah, exactly, day. exactly. Yeah, so um, you know, not not a, you know, not a bad thing, I guess, for us to get warmer, but feel bad for you guys for sure <laughs> <laughs> with that. We'll do okay. Uh, yep, yep. So, uh, but we're starting a little earlier tonight, and we uh, appreciate uh, everyone who's tuned in tonight. Um, 
without further ado, uh, let's welcome in um, our special guest. Um, he is the master blender. He is the uh, one and only Manuel Anoa of La Aurora Cigars. Manuel, welcome to Primetime. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, a big huge to all my friends uh, all over the American states. I love to be in North Carolina all the time. I enjoy it a lot when I be there. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I've also, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it, this is actually, it starts to get a little warm here in North Carolina. The best time to come to North Carolina is like um, October, is what I would say, or April. Those are the two best months we have here. <laughs> I've I never been in that spot. All the time it's in the winter that I'll be there. A lot of yeah. snow, a little cold, but it's good. I enjoy it. Uh, you know, we don't have snow in the island, so it's something uh, that I can enjoy it too. Man, well, what I tell people about the snow where I live in North Carolina, now when you go in the mountains, it's a different story, but where I live, you get just enough snow where it's not going to be too bad. You can look at it, you can enjoy it, and it usually melt away pretty quickly. As opposed to like our friends up in New England who have snow on the ground all, all winter, you know, it, here it's not as bad. So you can okay. really kind of enjoy it. Um, you go to the mountains a couple hours away, it's a different story, but those are, the, those are some high mountains over there in the gotcha. east yeah That's so good. yeah it's well, not like in the, in the caribbean the caribbean you have the same weather in the mountain in the in the, in the beach and the river too so we don't know we don't recognize the different uh chains that we yeah. have yeah. i mean i was gonna ask do they get any snow in those high mountains in the dominican i guess no right no the no yeah, it's, uh, the highest one in the whole caribbean is the pico duarte yeah. You only can get over there ice. No yeah. snow, no it's cool. For us it's very yeah. uh, very cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, so that's good, but we do appreciate you making the time um out there. I gotta tell you what I'm smoking, what I'm about to light up. So Manuel, everyone who asked me and um what is my all time favorite cigar? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what is like the one I would have? Th there, this is the answer I give every time. It's the uh, Sinan Anos uh, wow, Especial. Wow, wow, Cigar wow, of the Decade. Wow. This is, yeah. This is a great, great smoke, my brother. I, I, um, yeah, I mean, everyone who's associated with the show or watch, they could tell you uh, this is just my all time favorite cigar. So We are, uh, at, the, we are at the same side. Look at this. Look at this. I, I know the Maduro, but I have the Corona Sinan You can see uh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, coincidence, no? But it's, uh, uh, that's one is one of my favorite. We are trying. We are working to bring in the the whole line in the Maduro side. We are, oh, you just made my day. Uh, we have the very nice crop waiting for eight years just to do that. Uh, it's eight. It's eight years since this has come out. It was 2012 in Orlando. Yeah. Oh. Mm, very good. Yeah. But yeah, no, this is, um, this is, like I said, we'll talk about this towards the end of the interview because I could talk about this cigar forever. Um, Aaron, what are you smoking? I am not smoking. I'm in the house. So, oh, smoking. you, uh, I'm sorry. What does, yeah. mean, what does mean that you're in the house, bro? I'm in the house. I'm, I enjoy uh, I understand. Yeah. It's a little different in my house. So, uh, <laughs> I don't get to smoke in the house. I got, I have to smoke out, out in the backyard. So, why? Because you or because you're white? Well, I don't. It, it's both. It's both, actually. I don't. I wouldn't want to have smoke in the house. So, but, yeah, definitely. My wife didn't, no go. <laughs> I. I <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry, Aaron. Yeah, that's all right. That's I'll, all right. I'll, I'll have to suck it up. I'll. I'll smoke. I'll smoke a Laurel tomorrow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But no, again, you know, so it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a, like I said, great to have you on. Um, and I want to kind of start off, Manuel, before you even got in the cigar business, right? We always like to ask our guests, what's their first experience like smoking a cigar? Can you tell us about that first experience? Okay. Uh, when I was young, let's say eight to 10 years, my grandma loved to smoke cigars. Uh, Perrito. I don't know if you know the perrito bean. It's a, a like a pure gray cigar that mm -hmm. people do in his backyard and the front yard. You know, it's, it's a small pure gray, pure yeah. gray Sing, uh, single leaf. Say exactly. And she used a lot of, let's say at least in his body, uh, at least five pure gray. 
a few one in the in the here and a few in the pocket okay all the time i see him see her uh smoking but you know how the kids are very uh uh looking for things yeah. i went i would I, I wait till she goes sleep i take one brother i smoke that cigar and literally i die <laughs> dying for one day man drawing without strength uh, uh, killing my myself bro i cannot eat i cannot nothing i say i don't want to smoke anymore sorry my uh, uh, grandma it was a very uh, 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 uh not good experience you know what i mean yeah yeah that's about was my best my best time for cigar that i remember that's an horrible <laughs> so when did you come back to it then after you had such a bad experience the first time okay uh <laughs> i start to study uh let's say at in 18 i got i went to the uh, college university something like that um i meet one guy uh that's worked for general cigar company and they the company that do Macanudo, Patagas, in that time, okay? Now, uh, we could do very relationship. He can talk Spanish, I can talk Spanish from Puerto Rico. And he know that was studying uh, industrial engineer. And he say, okay, Manuel, when you need a job, I have a very good job for you. Hey, I came from a poor people uh, mm. family, okay? So I was working hard to get my degree. And he want to help me and say you have a job while you are studying i went to his office they bring me to benji menendez <laughs> and benjamin menendez <laughs> and, and angel nunez i was in the office they say hey uh you have a very good recommendation for paulino delgados and this paulino was the the mechanic he he was the brain in the factory to make uh, the machine work and the guy in charge of the boss factory so guy every design boxes coming from this guy okay uh sorry for the for the dog no problem <laughs> so uh <laughs> when i start to go there what a very nice smell when i go inside to the factory i say wow that's it's sort of different to my grandmother smoke. This is more, more nicey. Of course, you have a pure gray instead yeah. one a, a blended one. Right. So he said, "Oh, you have to try with a smaller one, and then you go to big one." So I start with a one grand. That I don't know if it doesn't exist anymore. What the wheel? Q U I L A, Macanudo. I don't know how to spell it, it then in English, if you quiet or queer. Mm -hmm. What's a type of uh, small cigar, like uh, very thin. It's 34, I think what's 34 by five. I start with this one with the uh, Connecticut wrapper. That's what the, the, my second experience that the cigar started to be nice for me because somebody was teaching me. Right. You know? So, but uh, this is the way that it start to, it's more now more uh, comfortable. Uh, I start to decide which one uh, I want to choose, but all the time smoking Corona side uh, because uh, ben Benji loved Corona at that time. Um, I had Daniel Nunez also, and that's the I start. I became an engineer, and then I start to do. Uh, improvement in the production improvement of the and the machines machinery setup uh i continue smoking and then i go to take care for the blend that uh, back in the year then 10 years later i go to to laurel okay no so you, how long were you how long were you at general for again how uh, what how long were you at General Cigar for? Oh, 10 years. 10 years. Oh, so you were there a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, when I really started for like uh, 
and you call this like a part-time. Mm -hmm. I went to, to that in part-time during that for two years, just uh, learning about process, hand to hand with uh, Benji and, and, and Daniel Nunes. And then when I graduated, I started to improve on the machinery setup, then on the handmade setup, then in the field, and take time for that, a lot of time. And then when I discovered the beautiful part of the blending area, my brother, it's like uh, you see something of the first lot, you be involved because you, you discover so many things there. Uh, how you taste the, the different level of the tree, how you taste when you blend them together, how you taste it when you bring tobacco from different uh, country. It was, um, was amazing, amazing. And you, uh, when you went to La Aurora, was what was the was the job there to take over the factory initially as you did or did you kind of work your way up to that yeah uh, uh, uh at that time you know the only company that supplied connecticut shape all over all the factory was general cigar cool bro tobacco company you know mm -hmm. cool bro. Uh, it's a division of general cigar right so people from la aurora and people from uh, different places, uh, different brands, go to talk with Daniel Nunez to buy Connecticut tobacco, right? So I have a contact. I was in charge to, to be nice with the quality of the leaf that we had to sell it to those uh, partners. Because, you know, we have a very good partner uh, of the different uh, brand. Um, uh, some professor that gave me Give me, they teach me class in the university. They say, uh, Manuel, I need somebody like you in La Aurora. I have to recommend you, I highly recommend you to Mr. Leon. They say, okay, uh, what type of company is this? He says, it's a family company. I like that. I like family. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why we do, uh, when I travel over the world, you know all my uh, costume, right? my family, my friends, my confidence, you know, because uh, that's the, the cigar put people very close together when you talk about cigar. Right. So uh, I went to uh, an interview with Mr. Leon, Guillermo Leon, and we start to talk. In a few days, Guillermo father come to me and say, hey, what are you doing here? I say, I need a new blend. And he said, what do you do? Well, I try to improve the things here. I know you have very good things, but we have to explore more things just in case you will be happy with that. I don't meet him. I, nobody introduced me to him, but I, I know he's a respectable man. He was an old man. I have the respect for that. So we are talking about uh, 27 years ago. Right. When I go to, to La Aurora. And he said, okay, I want to see what you can do with my cigar. I said, what? What do you want with your cigar? Yeah, I want to feel uh, the, remember the scene 20 years ago. My brother, it was a very, very complicated uh, meeting that I had with this gentleman. But I told you, start to say, okay, listen, uh, what type of memory you want to bring to from 30 or 20 or 40 years ago that you want to bring back at the, uh, uh, at the present? He said, well, I want to bring all those nice cigars that came with those flavors, with that taste, like cocoa, like uh, coffee, thing like, thing like that. And I started to investigate what is the old the, the tobacco seed that the island has. He said, oh, no, you don't have to say nothing. I, I, I also, uh, all the time I use the uh, Piloto Cubano seed and Carbonel, Carbonel seed. This is the type of uh, seed that uh, for a long time ago uh, that is seed. Okay, I have to, to uh, think, to think. Carbonel and Piloto Cubano, okay? We start to do blend with him. He said, eh, 
I know it's good, but it's not the thing that I remember in the past. Okay. I am a fan for tobacco from Brazil. I love uh, the Matafina Brazil. And that time, Guillermo bring a huge container full of nice Matafina Brazil. I start to play with that. I do a few samples from him, from Don Fernando. Say, Guillermo, you think Don Fernando will like this? Oh, no, I don't know. You have to talk with him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go to Don Fernando. The gentleman that you need to do an appointment to see him. <laughs> he see me every day. <laughs> but at that day, I want to see him. I say, uh, I go to the secretary and say, uh, hey, I want to see Don Fernando. Uh, Don Fernando means respect, okay? You know, uh, Don it means a lot of respect to the, right. to the people, no? So we go to the Don Fernando and say, listen, Don Fernando, we do a few blend that I don't want to try. You try. Okay. I will do it in my home. He take back his sample to him, very fresh, eh? no age, nothing. The tobacco very well aged, of course. And uh, Don Fernando say that in a couple of days, hey, Manuel, come on. I'm going to tell you, that cigar, I like it. I really like it. That's the, the one that I want to remember. I, I read the game because I was thinking they were going to kill me when I do the chain for him. And then he, I understand what he's looking for. So we start to do a different uh, type of blend with the two principal ingredients, the carbonyl seed and the piloto cubano seed. Growing piloto cubano in Mao, the Mao is the region right here, like piloto cubano Mao. And in Navarrete is uh, the one that's the, the the carbonyl ones. So we take time to be in love with this gentleman, my brother, maybe years and a half to finalize the cigar they really want. But there are some problems. He want to use very unique wrapper that only uh, they crop in a few places right here. I said, wow. And Dominican wrapper. At that time, you can't imagine, eh? Right. Uh, right. It was very, uh, very well treated, very well done, right? But I said, no, no, I have a, for now, they use Cameroon Africa. Cameroon Africa, because they have a very good relationship with Rafael and, uh, and those gentlemen. No? The cigar was nice, my friend. We start to be very close friends. Then he said, hey, I want to put in my cigar the original uh, wrapper that I want to use, that I used in the past. It was a Corossi in his land, in Savannah del Puerto. <laughs> it's close to the Fuentes farm, because this area is good for, for wrapper. My brother, we do very unique, a unique crop right there. Very unique crop. But I, we cannot continue because most of the people, the, the, the people that have the technology to crop tobacco, they move to another area. But we do a nice crop, let's say for 200,000 cigars, let's say that. And we keep using the, his Corona, the Fonday Choice, and you know, very important guy, we don't sell it. He give it to his friend, he give it to, because his brother was a, a ambassador in Washington, Dominican ambassador in Washington. So you can imagine what type of guy smoked that cigar. So it had to be perfect. Um, that's why I start to learn a lot. So I have a two uh, uh, mentor. One mentor was Benji Menendez, and the second was Fernando Leo. Wow. Hand to hand, Guillermo. Guillermo, right? Because Guillermo was my, my line to follow it, you know, because he knows his father. And this is part of the story. What did that cigar actually turn out to be in the end? Was that something that, that ended up going into production? What, whatever happened with that cigar? Oh, well. 
uh, we when I came with, to lunch to share that beautiful cigar with the people, um, he said, "Hey, Guillermo, I don't want to be in the front. If you launch this cigar, I had to be traveling, and talking with people, you know, their own family, uh, very rich people, but they right. don't want to be a magazine. They don't want to be in the front. They don't need that." Mm -hmm. So Don Fernando say you can do whatever you want to do when I die. Okay. Until I am be alive, keep in my in the back, you no, know, in the front. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to share my cigar. I want to give it to my friend. We don't we don't sell it. Eh? Uh, never sell it. Um, uh, they only give it to the his closest friend. And of course, because I was the blender, I was smoking <laughs> a lot of that cigar. Right. right. <laughs> What was this so, the Fernand? Did this become the family reserve? The Fernando Lizzo? Yes, sir. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, wow. yes. They, when he passed away, Guillermo decided to launch it like family reserve. Don Fernando Leon, no, no, not Don Fernando, Fernando Leon family reserve. Oh, and wow, keep, and keep the corona like founder choice. Founder ah. choice. That's the name for the corona, but you know, the, the corona is not too much popular in the states. Uh, all over the world, uh, but, uh, but uh, we keep it. Uh, in, till today, all my cigars are Corona, because Benji loved Corona. Fernando Leon loved Corona. What I have to do? Love yeah. Corona too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a yeah. great, that was a great, I didn't know that whole backstory of that. And then when you started mentioning the tobaccos, I just looked it up. I said, I think this is the Fernando Leon. And you, then you kind of said it was, you, you know, it was going to be his personal cigar. Wow. That's a great story. Yeah, but, uh, let me tell you, uh, no, every time was the happy day. Sometimes he said, what did you do? My, my, uh, Manuel, he don't say me, my friend, my brother, Manuel. What did you do, Manuel? This cigar uh, don't taste like a, a, a one. Right. Now I have to reblend it. Back to the world, you know what uh, what this uh, job is. Yeah. Uh, maybe you do something for you, but it's not the one that be successful. You have to think in and uh, uh, not the person because cigar is very personal. I think it's very good for me, but uh, maybe he don't like it because you remember another thing that I remember. You know what I mean? It's true. It's true. So, Manuel, you've pretty much been involved with blending from day one there, obviously. Um, are you involved with things such as fermentation? Is that something that falls under your your, your jurisdiction as well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, when when I do the, uh, the setup um, or the investigation uh, to improve things in general, we have to work in the factory, we have to work in the land, and we have to work on the... Or on the warehouse. So, as soon as you import the tobacco, you need to know every single step from C to cigar main. And from C, I learned that for do a good cigar, a factor affect the good smoke. So, a factor, type of seed, type of land, weather, a curing process, fermenting, aging. Yeah? You need to know about all the things. So I start to learn very close to people. Right. One of the people was the general cigar people, and the highest one was the, the La Aurora uh, people, because uh, they are very, uh, very close to do uh, the process well done. Uh, I mean, uh, they follow up all the time. Uh, they want to know who who process the tobacco, who give it the seed, which farm it is, you know, all the procedure, you know? Yeah. You guys have some unique things, though, that you do with fermentation at the factory, correct? Oh, uh, yes. We do a second fermentation, okay? Yeah. Second. Because uh, all the fermentation is on the warehouse, on the field. Mm -hmm. Fermenting and curing, you know, all the time is on the field. Right. When you be, uh, when you are good with us tobacco, then you bring it to the warehouse for aging. But uh, 
we have a very strict uh, uh, selecting for the leave that you decide which one go to uh, extra aging, no in, uh, in birth, no in, in Troja. You know Troja, a big uh, pile of tobacco. Right. You can do a little Troja inside to the company and burritos. You know burritos, when you do a, a, a circle one. Mm -hmm. The um, the other thing that I noticed when I visited your factory, that I've seen people do barrel aging before. I never saw that many barrels of aging tobacco in a factory as I saw in yours. No, no. Uh, we have two warehouses for, for uh, rum bottles. Uh, we do the, the aging like everybody do mm -hmm. in birth. Yeah. Okay? But if we decide to choose the best, the best of the tobacco or the best of the crop, because it's like the wine, exactly like the wine. You have a very nice crop for a good wine, and then maybe the next year is not good enough, and you don't think we reserve just the regular one. Right. So uh, we have a two warehouse for the barley, for the bar. One on the factory, and one at the factory to to be close to the process is a small inventory. Let's say two months on inventory, but uh, we have a very a huge warehouse full of tobacco. You can imagine, like uh, when you go to the room distillery, because yeah, you see a lot of that's uh, yeah. Powder. That's yeah. what surprised me when I saw all that. There was a, I mean, I've seen barrels in a factory, but it's like a handful. You, it looked like I walked in there and I saw this distillery of all these barrels with the tobacco, and I was like, wow. Okay, see, see, but what are we looking for about the butter? You know, the, the sugar cane has his own uh, flavors and mm -hmm. uh, right. story to tell, right? Also, the rum butter are burned inside. Mm -hmm. So, nice touch of wood, smoky mm -hmm. wood, right. coming for that and, and the tobacco is very hydroscopic they bring all the, the the things all the flavors into the into it yeah and do you use that mostly for fillers or is it do you have some wrappers that you use with that as well no, we do we do for filler absolutely all the time mm -hmm. sometimes we do uh binder um for the brand butter lace, we do the filler wrapper and the and the binder. Okay. But you know, everybody knows the tobacco industry that, that know that the higher uh, percentage of the flavor percentage and the flavor is on the filler. Okay. Depending what the filler you use, mm -hmm. the wrapper or the binder we mean a lot. Or less. Right. Filler is the most important thing. Yes. That's good to hear. That's good. To hear. Yeah, like I said, it was it was a great sight to see all that uh, in the factory. And I assume you're also involved a lot with quality control as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's hand to hand. Yeah. Uh, you have to train in people to keep it the con the control when the, you the you 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 made the point. You made the mark. Okay. I want like this, like this, like this, like this. So you train people to keep it like you create. So a lot of people and the quality control is as accurate that the product became a was decided to be in the market. Uh, and this is very important for us. We have want to keep all the time the same profile, the same quality control, the same quality of the and the brand, same quality of, of the production. So we have a bunch of supervisors working on that and on the primary process and secondary process and the primary process is around a uh, filler binding and wrapping taking care of there you can see a lot of supervisor over there and then in the secondary process where the cigar is made because you can do a very unique blend but if, as soon you bring it to the rollers you can destroy this blend if he don't do it the right way so people have to be watching all the time yeah. Yeah. No, that's very true. It's very true.
And then you also wear another hat. Um, like you mentioned, you come to the States a lot um, in, the, in the role of a brand ambassador. And I know that you've done your own version of the blending seminar um, that I've seen. Um, I've seen some video of these blending seminars. And uh, could you talk a little about that? Because that's a very, I, I've actually seen it. It's very educational. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I never traveled, my friend, uh, all over the world. I never traveled till four years ago. A uh, company, I had all the time taking care of the production, taking care of the crop uh, with a team, okay? We have a lot, a lot of engineer, agriculture engineer, taking care of the field, and we, we be together, working together, okay? But we find it, Guillermo is very smart guy, so he finds that outside people need to know what is behind one, one cigar. You know, most of the people doesn't know how many hands touch the leaf to make a cigar. Um, most of the people go to the store to buy a cigar. Okay, I want to smoke one cigar, that one, this one, because I like it. But they don't know what happened behind the brand. So I gave him say, okay, I, I think we have to create a cigar institute to teach people, to tell him what we do, why we use that type of tobacco, why we use that type of land. So uh, we give him invest a lot of money on the cigar institute to teach people. And he said, okay, only a few can came to see uh, the Cigar Institute and learn because uh, they need to pay the, the flight, they need to be the, uh, to be in the hotel, they need to pay the food, things like that, no? And he said, okay, let's put you on the front. That's a matter what happened. Because you know, every plant blender of the company is a target. And people want to get it, okay? So most of the blender are hiding. Maybe you don't know all the blender that can be in each factory, maybe a few. But I say, no, no, no uh, we need to, to tell the people what we do. So <clears throat> we created one uh, nice box, <clears throat> and we created the blending, blending kit. <coughs> And the blending kit, also our our uh, seminar that we do, the picture, the chart that we present, people can understand more easy, more easy. Uh, what do we do? Okay, we explain how important is the the land, how important is the is the the the, the seed. People maybe don't even understand when I talk what is important in the land. They need to know that the land is very important because every soil, every country has its own soil. So have its own story to tell. It's not the same the land from Cuba that the land from Dominica. And the same Caribbean, eh? also this land from Nicaragua or the land from Brazil or Cameroon or Indonesia. And so and they are more clear and that when we start to do the seminar, how important is land and sea? But they are more engaged where they, they know how we blend it. And we bring four or five, depending on the blender that we use, different few grades to smoke it. And we go through the world, lands. Listen, that's the, the land from Nicaragua, that's the land uh, for Peru, that's the land from Brazil. But they don't know how important is the position for the air of the leaf into the tree. The position of the leaf into the tree. It's not the same to take one seco or viso than to take one ligero or medio tiempo. That's and blending size is mean a lot. A lot because every single position of the tree into the, the leaf into the tree. Uh, bring you a lot of information at the moment of this book, a lot. And the best way to describe it when we go through, I tell you, listen, the seco 
uh, don't bring too much uh, flavor. They bring a few. Most of the herbs fla flavored and woody and dry fruit notes coming from the, and the sweet, something sweet coming from the, the seco. Then you go for the bison that you got more tropical fruit, and citrus, something like that. And then you go to the ligero, more power, more flavor, like uh, cocoa, like coffee, honey, vanilla, something like that. People say, wow, but how do you get that flavor? They don't seem not to get it. So we teach the people how to get it. Because through the mouth, through the nose, you only can perceive for flavor. It's uh, sour, bitter, salty, or sweet. That's it. Also, the umami. Uh, but the umami, I only tell the people to find out what is the umami flavor. Because it's related with the, with the meat. Yep. But in the cigar side, for flavor. Okay. They, they assume that, but uh, they don't continue understanding. When I say, okay, when you decide to smoke one cigar for one reason, Maybe you love La Aurora because something is inside. They don't know it. I had soon you telling them, bring the flavor to the nose and put your memory to fly away, to remember things when you was uh, very young or when you go to the fields or when you go to the, uh, to the supermarket to smell all those uh, fruity that you see in the supermarket. You love it. You love it. Um, we try to teach them how to get it. As soon as you learn, as soon as they learn, they appreciate it more the cigar because they have more a, a more open uh, mind to decide which cigar will be much better or worse. Oh yeah. Yeah, that um yeah, that kid is amazing. I, we're getting some comments. I guess uh, Adrian was just talking about how it taught him a lot about tasting um, in our comment there as well. The, um, and then you mentioned, you mentioned the Institute. That's, that's the piece of, like in the factory upstairs, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And it's not, it's an Institute not for make money. Right. It's not for make money. We have all the money that you can imagine. You know, right. the family. yeah. It's uh, because the passion that the family has to teach the people uh, uh, how they can get uh, flavors and sensation and uh, appreciate more the cigar. Because most of the people are confused uh, in terms of that they smoke. I all the time say cigar is not for a smoke. Cigar is for enjoy. Yep. So smoke, everyone can do it. To be on the on the high life, enjoy it. It's different. You take time to be relaxed, to be patient with good friends, with good book, with good uh, drinks. So it means a lot the difference between the smoke and enjoy. It. And most of the people don't don't do that. Eh? Uh, most of the people go to the cigar bar to smoke and drink, and they became crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I, when I was there at Pro Cigar, I got to go up to the Institute for a while. And then, you know, what I liked about it, you, there's one room you can overlook and see everything going on in the factory. Downstairs, you have the whole history of the factory, like, really well laid out. I mean, if you want to learn everything about the history of La Aurora, it, it's there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, story, st history is good to the people. Every brand having its own story in, uh, behind, you know? Um, people love that. They, they look, cigar lovers love that. They know, they want to be the, to see the passion. They want to see what is behind. What did you, what people do my product that I like it, you know? They want to be involved. They want to be engaged. And the only way to do it is show him, show him the, uh, our tradition issue our culture how we start you know yep no I, I i definitely agree on that aaron anything on factory or anything related to that we wanted to hit because we get into some of the brand pieces yeah go ahead and hit the brands okay i guess one comment i wanted to ask you um manuel 
a lot of Aurora loves their anniversaries, though. You guys have a lot of anniversary cigars. So that's obviously a very important thing, getting back to the history of commemorating those milestones, correct? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, we love to celebrate. We are the, the most happy people in the world. Yeah. <laughs> we celebrate yeah. everything. So we have a, a lot of brands that celebrate uh, the history of the company, uh, the history of the country, the history of the city. For example, the last two years, we bring the 115 anniversary. We celebrate 115 years, bro. Nobody in the island have 115. No. Now we have 117 now. So we are working hard to, to the next step. Yeah. But, uh, we take the time. We take the time. Uh, we have a very good experience with the Cien Años, the 100th anniversary, the, the one that you smoked, right? This is the Maduro, yeah. But, the Maduro, but, yeah. But we came with the original one, which uh, 100 years, bro. It's a big, big uh, uh, event that we have to celebrate. So you can imagine what high compromise the, the Aurora team have to do to celebrate 100 years. So we have to came with the cream of the cream. So we if we keep at least nine years tobacco, you have to celebrate that. Because all the time we're thinking uh, in 10 years in the future. You have to be sure, because tobacco, uh, you need it to do all that, because you cannot improve things in tobacco. You need to have the, the best crop, the best weather, and the very well done the aging and the fermenting and curing process. Okay, yeah, so, totally. Yeah. And when you released the Cien Años in the Corojo, that, that was an all Dominican cigar with a Dominican wrapper. Was that the first time La Aurora had done that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, and in the past, uh, we're talking about, what, 60 years, maybe 60 years. The only, the only thing that wasn't was in Dominican was the wrapper. Sometimes we use Cameroon Africa, and sometimes we do Connecticut Shea. Mm -hmm. But the rest, all natural from Dominican. Yeah. But during the year, we bet a lot of money, we have a very good relationship with the uh, farmer. Uh, we do the binder and um, wrapper from Dominican. So we do very nice Corojo, uh, and that's uh, in that time, uh, we take the time for that. And flavor, that's amazing, amazing. But you know, and the second release, we came in again with the same, but never we taste like the first one because the weather. Right, you know, sure. The crop is different. So we try to do the best, but maybe sometimes you don't have the, the tobacco to do it. Uh, now we save at least four unique crops that are working to develop more things. Uh, on the 15 is one of, one of these. Yeah. Yep. Why, why, was, why is it sometimes so hard to get a good Dominican wrapper? Well, you know, uh, if you want to get a very nice wrapper, rich people have to invest in it. Rich people, because our farmers have the culture to do the easy way. Right. What is the easy way that everybody buy it is our filler. Everyone, mm -hmm. listen, every, every single cigar all over the world have at least a piece of Dominican wrapper, but they don't tell, uh, the Dominican feel, but they don't tell nobody. They want to be in the way. Let's say, now people love San André. Hey, La San André, but it's using San André is a little bit aggressive. So you need to reduce the aggressivity using very flavorful Dominican tobacco. Uh, Nicaragua, very spicy, very, very good tobacco too, but I need to be reduced the, this uh, aggressive thing. So we sell a lot of containers from Nicaragua. Uh, I don't want to say that, but because, uh, well, we are in the air, but <laughs> <laughs> even Cuba use a lot of Dominican tobacco too. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, 
but you know, we had to keep the bounds up. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Listen, if you go to any magazine that you see uh, a, a lot of nice rating for Nicaragua, every single leaf is from Nicaragua and the magazine. But if you do start to investigate, you will see a lot of tobacco that came from Dominica <laughs> <laughs> and in other places. Yeah. All right. <laughs> You know, another another uh, brand that I think La Aurora has absolutely just become synonymous with is the Preferitos uh, shape. In fact, I've had oh. a Preferito. I've had a Preferitos in the Cien Años. It's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we do a, a very – it was for a, a – not much a, a Preferito Cien Año for a regular line. You was for a special requirement for a few customers that are bringing in. Uh, because uh, they think that be unique, but uh, they take us out of the scene. I mean, uh, we don't we prepare with you. You know, our all our preferido have a very nice view. Uh, have something to tell because uh, they are stone, like a stone, like a, a diamond, like preferido ruby, like preferido emerald. You know. But what you can tell in preferido cien años, you cannot say nothing. So <laughs> <Right>. it's the <you. laughs> Because somebody wanna, uh, we be ready for that. We we are very uh, gentle at that time. And that type of uh, things, you know. We wanna put all the people happy. It doesn't matter yeah. what we have to do, we try to do it. And the yeah. preferido uh, is the top line of the company. Is the top top quality, top uh, care, uh, and the higher production that we have. So very limited, very very limited, because the roller can do only a hundred cigars every day, and that roller has to has at least twelve years of experience, mm. minimum, minimum. Had to be perfect. Yeah. This is the reason why when you smoke one preferido. You never want to live that long. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Manuel, when, when the Cien Año Edition Especial came out, the same year you guys released the, uh, the diamond, the preferito, the broadleaf. And it was like, yeah, I was just, yeah. it was like one, yeah. two that year. It was just so good, those cigars. That's my yeah, favorite. By the way, black. Yeah. At that time, uh, was the first time that we used uh, Connecticut broad leaf. Uh, yeah. Uh, on it. So uh, we start to discover a new thing. Yeah. Like what's in the in the market. So we do the preferido uh, diamond and we do the Cien Año uh, limited edition with the Maduro. Yeah. And let yeah. me tell you, we are working hard for to bring it back the whole line on the Maduro Cien Año. Eh? Uh, I, 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 I am fully supportive of the efforts to do that. <laughs> Which side you love to smoke? Um, Corona Gorda, the Corona Specials. Oh, you are on the same side of Guillermo. <laughs> that was <laughs> that that size in his line. That signature line is is fantastic. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's very comfortable in the mouth. It's yeah, comfortable to get the smoke because it's not too much, it's not too less, mm. and you feel very good. Yeah, it's very good. Sometimes it, you smoke some Churchill, it's too much. You sometimes smoke some Corona, it's too less. Yeah, I see that's the, the best size. Oh, I, yeah, 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 you get just enough ring, like you said, just enough length. It, it, every one, it, I know when you did the uh, the Coseca 2006, that was another one that was again in that size, fantastic. Yeah, but that size, but that size, yeah, uh, because I start to love it. Uh, and they start to understand that the people he don't love anymore the lancero don't love anymore the corona so we have to be now uh, something in between yeah um, i think this is the one that we never disappear the yeah. the corona gorda yeah i think you like i said even some of the preferito blends you've done in that size as well so yes yeah and i've loved that as well i just think that's that is la aurora i, I know you're known for the preferito great size i just love that 47 ring gauge on that <laughs> yeah. Very good. 
Yeah. Good. Yep. Um, and Preferitos, that's an old size, right? That goes back to the history of the company. So that, that wasn't a... Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that story is very, very cool. Uh, Guillermo went to came with something special, bro. With something special to put the brand in the top. Um, he, he went to his uh, uncle, uncle uh, warehouse and he find out one box of preferido that never we see it, we see it, we don't see it. Uh, nobody know about us, that brand. We only know the name, but we don't know the design of the boxes, the shape and things like that. So when he go to his, that warehouse, the uncle warehouse, he find a very old box for 1903, brother. 1905, something like that. He see, he saw that beautiful box, very antique box. And he's bring exactly the same uh, boxes, a little bit modern, you know, a little bit, not too much. Uh, well, he did the, the uh, he do uh, the new uh, lion because in the past, but uh, uh, we came up with a lot of lions. You know, our our seal is the lion. You know right. That? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, because his last name. Leon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, he worked a lot about the box design without the cigar. Nothing to see with the cigar, just with the box because it was very cool. Then. Talking with his father, with his uncle, they explain what type of shape have the cigar at the beginning. Because don't say it sit more, plastic more than wooden more, no wooden more at that time, or do that. And yeah. he said, okay, I will try to do some uh, perfecto, uh, figurado, figurado shape. I need to talk with somebody to do the more for that because you don't have more repetitions, no more people like that to do in the past for that, 1903. So we start to do plastic more with a different shape. We try, we try to smoke uh, different, uh, maintaining his uh, figure, changing how the, the ovalo, the circumference go down. So we work hard on that project. And then we came with the first one, Preferido Platinum, platinum the, the silver one, the camera. And then people start to say, hey, I, I want a man of this, I want a more of this. <laughs> so we start to bring wrapper, blend, until, uh, I don't remember we do, when we do the Preferido Emerald. That's the one they start to change the blend. Mm -hmm. Preferido Emerald, Preferido Emerald in the back, and they say Preferido Connecticut, Preferido Cameroon, Preferido Maduro, Brazilian Maduro, same blend, only the rapid chain. But, but, but when we do the Emerald, a new generation is coming, demanding for more things. So we have to improve the, the blend for the Emerald. So and then we go to the a black diamond, a little bit more thin to turn. Then we go to the double barrel edge. We start to improve during the yeah. time. You know, yeah. it, it resumed in a few minutes. Seems that happened for a, a lot of time ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I love the variations of that. Um, with yeah. Those, uh, yeah. And then people, the new generation, want to keep that shape like uh, the older generation want to keep that shape like uh, something for story to tell. Yeah. yeah. But a new generation came, we need to do the perfect, the, the parejo, the, the yeah. straight one. Right. So the, this is the reason why we came for the exactly. Yeah. Thing like that. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the new generation mark the market. Yeah. So it's you. You don't want to lose uh, a market. You need to be according to the market. You know, man. Well, that that diamond in that big that big ring gauge is probably one of the strongest cigars I've ever had out of your factory. I mean, that thing was strong. 
it was it was good, but it's very strong. And I'm talking about the the black diamond in the almost the Gordo size, I think. Yeah, yeah, but uh, also if you smoke it carefully, it's very full flavor. Oh yeah, it's good. It's flavors unbelievable off the chart with it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a, I love that cigar. Yeah, the it's a really good. And the Corojo one. That those two cigars for me. It's the I love Corojo. I love Rolid. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm so happy that we do a very good job in there, and people love it too. So they are all the time talk. They want to talk about that that line, the Preferidos line. Yeah, yes. it's a it's a great line. It's a great line. I've enjoyed. Like I said, there's so much variety. There's something for everybody um, in that line, uh, which I find is really that's what I enjoy about it a lot. Exactly. You know, uh, every uh, person have his own taste, his own right. uh, choose. So we try to cover all the segments, yeah. uh, from the light one to the strong one, in terms of flavor, <laughs> not in terms of uh, uh, power, you know? Yeah. Strength, no strength. Because I, I personally, I think that, like I tell you at the beginning, I love to enjoy one cigar. I don't want to bring a cigar that was killing me. Right. A, a full power. Come on, you came to enjoy or you come to suffer? Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 You know, another another line, it's a more, it's a newer line that you have. Um, and again, I just think it's a, another, just something that you guys really knocked out of the park. The Horde of um, and that, that's a limited line, but talk well, about it, that cigar, because that's a great cigar. This is another story, bro. You know, when you do a crop, uh, you all the time select uh, the best of the best on, on the crop. Sometimes that don't give you a lot of cigar. So like every, pop, every people came with, uh, I would tell you like the wine, they came like a, Reserve, limited reserve, grand reserve, uh, opus. I don't tell about opus X, okay? Right. I tell <laughs> more H. Yeah. H. Uh, people believe that the in Tamar H, opus is the maximum, but it's not. We discovered looking for different things that the Top of the top of age is or that in France. You don't can see too much wine that can say that. Eh? They all the time it came with the reserve, limited reserve, thing like that. But all that, you have to have a lot of money, you have to have a, a lot of passion to keep 12 year tobacco aging in the warehouse. Most of the people want to make money. Yep. The easy way to to get tobacco, very good tobacco for four years, five years, but to keep tobacco for 12 years is not easy. It's not easy. You want to make money. So you don't want to be losing money staying in the warehouse. But if you are a company that respect the consumer, you want to do the best for them if you got the money. And the Leon family has the money. So we can keep aging tobacco until we decide. Yeah. We have a wrapper, very nice wrapper from 2006. 2006. To do more or less 1,500,000 cigars. So we are waiting for to see what we can do with that because we are telling, we are talking about around 12, um, just in rapper, eh? 12 for, to 14 years. Mm -hmm. Because failure is easy to keep in an age. The rapper is not. Rapper, we have to take more care to keep it safe. And so, so there's a, it's a double aging process. There's the tobacco, but then the cigars after they're rolled are aged as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is the reason why we call a uh, horse dash, horse the age, in, uh, in English, horse dash is in French. 
or the age is more than age, more time in age, you know? <clears throat> so when you decide to do one product like this product, you can you cannot satisfy everyone because every time that we do it, it's gone. It's gone. We do uh, the most quantity that we do was uh, two thousand boxes. Two thousand boxes. Uh, it's not too much. It's not too much. Uh, that put the cigar expensive because uh, expensive wrapper aging for time. Um, you need to decide what nice blend you have to put it in according with that wrapper. There, that's we've had the Toro sizes in the U.S. right, but I noticed some other sizes floating around. There's that big one, the eighty ring gauge, like it's really long, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Listen, we do uh, the Toro size for yeah. please, mm -hmm. but we had to do something for uh, Pro Cigar Fest, right? Something different, and we do a humidor, right? That we include. We include the Toro, Gran Toro, Pelicoso, and uh, I don't know what, what had the name. It's the B rings, A, A rings. So extravaganza. The, the extravaganza? Extravaganza. Yeah. Yes. Extravaganza. You cannot find it. You cannot find it. Only I know. <laughs> That's a big humidity. <laughs> Have you smoked that? Have you smoked that size? It's, it's, it's like. Yeah, it's really no, no, no. <laughs> 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 but uh, you know, you know Eugene, right? The, our tourist right. guy. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This guy for sure the, during the tour, he do it. He oh, do wow. it. He's <laughs> oh, he did. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. He, anyway, if you, he is one of the best cigar tour guides you'll ever have. I mean, if you go to La Roa and he does the tour, you're in for a real treat with him. <laughs> hey, not only you can say that. Every pe people yeah. from the world know that our company received a lot of visitors for different places. Yeah. Yeah. We are the, the, the number one attractive place to visit in Santiago and the number 10 in the whole island. And you know we have a lot of beautiful things to see. Yeah. So people came to see what do we do at the factory, um, what do we uh, blend it, what we produce, and no one like Eugene is the best to explain in the same language that they talk, yeah, they know a lot of language. Yeah, uh, they explain to the people what it is, and people love it to see him uh, uh, smoking the extravaganza. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to and, see and that. It's a, when we show the the humidor uh, on the because we it reminded maybe ten ten uh, uh, humidor, but they bring in the uh, the IPCPR show. <laughs> Indian people from the reservation, they came to, to see, hey, I want to buy, I want to buy. They buy one humidor and they sit in one place on the, on the IPCPR. Three people are smoking the same cigar, my brother, like the oh, wow. peace <laughs> pipe, like a peace <laughs> pipe. Yeah. This thing, yeah. This thing, okay, I saw it at the show and I just, that thing was just like, uh, that was big, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you bring it like a souvenir, but mm -hmm. some people don't receive the souvenir. They want to yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Those are beautiful. It's beautiful art there. A um, couple of other lines I want to mention. Um, the Coseca. Uh, Coseca. You did, no, no, Coseca. No, no. Coseca. Correct. Thanks for correcting me. Coseca. Um, 2006, 2007. Uh, they've been great cigars. Um, I've enjoyed those off extensions off the 107 line. Um, exactly. What we, what we want, that the people understand how different can taste one cosecha to another. Cosecha yeah. means crop, you know? Cosecha means crop, tobacco crop, harvest. You understand that? Yep. See, so uh, we came with the cosecha because it's our language, cosecha. Cosecha 2007, cosecha 2006. Uh, because that's it, the seminar, telling the people how the fed, the flavor, the weather, the time, time to time. Cosecha 2006 is not the same as Cosecha 2007 
uh, and things like that. For this reason, we bring a cosecha and we bring the pure vintage too. Yep. You know, we do pure vintage every two years. And we do one, the, the, we, it's not too much, it's not too much and the pure vintage, we can get a little bit more on the cosecha to a one or seven, yes, yes. yes. What, what would you say is the, my, one of my questions was what was the what do you how would you categorize the difference between the cosecha and and the uh, pure vintage what what are the differences in terms of how they're how they're no, no. Uh, you can choose best of the best for pure vintage mm -hmm. the best for cosecha in the regular cosecha for the premium one right yeah you know if you see the tree if you see the tree you have a lot of small leaf in the top right uh you can call medio tiempo or you can call uh high coronas mm -hmm. corona right <laughs> i went to to europe you know travel a lot and some company from cuba selling the product selling telling the people hey, we are having the best of the uh medio tiempo and you know people don't say nobody's medio tiempo Right. right. And they start to see, wow, this is a very good cigar, medio tiempo, nobody have that. Brother, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> you can do no more. Right. <laughs> it's very exciting here. <laughs> it's marketing. Yeah. Marketing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember when that Pearl Vintage uh, 2003 came out. I was like, that was another just home run. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, they, by, they, by the way, last night I have a... Uh, Perry seminar, Perry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one of the guys inside, uh, at least a hundred people, he say, Hey, I want to get one Puro Vinte 2003. I'd love to get it. They say, My friend, if you can get this cigar, please invite me. I will enjoy with you to enjoy it together. <laughs> because it's no more Puro Vinte 2003. No, no way to get it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think people love that when you got something special, something unique that nobody had. That's yeah. the beauty of the of this type of world or this type of uh, uh, products, you know? That thing that people don't think have, they want to have it to tell the people, hey, I got the cosecha. I got the full of interest. I got the limited edition of the C9. They want to be a, a, like a, a very rich guy because nobody has yeah. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> the, uh, the other cigar I want to mention, um, and this one's been popular in North Carolina in particular, um, is the DNA. Um, DNA. The Indulio, um, which uh, that cigar became very popular, one of the most popular our cigars, at least in the shops I go to here. People... Uh, and and I and I really that one I really do like uh, with the Andulio, very unique cigar there, and it's unique to unique fermented tobacco, correct? Si 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 si, uh, but it's another process that we do for Andulio. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you, very successful in the states and very successful in Europe because the story you tell is behind, also because the cigar is great for sure. Yeah. Uh, and people don't say no, but it's Andulio. They want to try. It's like exactly that I tell you. Uh, uh, medio tiempo. People mm -hmm. want to try what is medio tiempo. In our case, all the people want to try the andujo. You know, uh, the process for regular tobacco is at least four years. Curing process, fermenting, aging, you know, they take time. Uh, because it's naturally. On the andujo, the way that the Indian the Caribbean Indian we do uh, what's the fermentation, the curing, the curing, the fermenting and the aging process just all together in a palm tree leaf that we call jagua. Palm tree leaf that put don't, don't let it breathe. The tobacco breathe inside. All the juice of the tobacco is inside. And during in one year, year maybe two months. You have it ready. Most of our farmer and the Indian in the past do like uh, do like a pipe tobacco. Mm -hmm. 
like pie tobacco, so people understand. Uh, and they use it for pie too, but they use it for connecting with God. They sniff in the past. Okay. Uh, also, they smoking like pipe of peace mm -hmm. because the tobacco put you maybe crazy because it's too much. <laughs> so you you lose your mind. So I'm connecting with the guy now. <laughs> I noticed you have a blending kit now with that tobacco in it. I haven't tried yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing. I tell the people, listen, we will go all the five pure gray, but on the Anduja pure gray, you need, when I say stop, you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> they want to continue smoking because it's very nice to smoke. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But the power coming slowly. The nicotine goes slowly, slowly, suddenly they kill you. They kill you. <laughs> right. And they don't believe me, so they continue to say, oh, Manuel, you must cry. I, I don't want to smoke. What can I do? <laughs> say, Drink a lot of water. And the only yeah. way to you draw out the nicotine is uh, drinking water. So the bad, you know? yeah. Exactly. Oh, wow. <laughs> now I'm going to have to do that, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to get one of those and do it. Yeah, yeah. When you feel not good, when some cigar hit you, yep. <laughs> drink a lot of water. Don't drink uh, alcohol. Eh? <laughs> alcohol be potentialized yep. the greatest yep. thing. Yep. So some water will be good, and then with the with the pee you go to the pee room, and yep. they go in a few minutes, you will be good again. Yep. Yep. All right, Aaron. Any other blend questions or? Yeah, we had, they had a question in the chat room. Uh, somebody was asking if there was any plans to bring the Laura Roy 1495 back at any time. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. well, we are thinking seriously to uh, rebrand it, to change the imaging of the, of the 1495. It's a very unique blend. Yeah. Very great, great blend. It's still working good in Europe. Uh, but uh, it's a grandfather in, you know, now with the FDA, we, we have a lot of problems. Every company sure. has a lot of problems if they don't have grandfather in. 1495 is grandfather. So I think him very carefully to bring it back to, uh, to the retail channel, to the retail channel, yes. Yeah. This was a unique cigar, what to celebrate the Santiago Foundation. Um, we had to come and again with a very unique uh, uh, blend. Was the first time that we do Peruvian tobacco inside. You got yeah. I mean, my first introduction to Peruvian tobacco was through that cigar. From what I remember, I think that might have been the first blend I had with Peruvian. That at least I can remember. Um, yeah. And you, 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 and it's a very, it's a unique tobacco, especially when you, I have smoken the perito of that, and it is a very, it's a, it's got a nice sweetness to it. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm bringing you a, a, a lot of taste or, or, or earth. It's easy to under, the, the people yeah. understand the the air nodes, the dry air nodes when they smoke it. Also, very easy to bring the the dry fruit nodes and woods, because people get it like that. Yep. You know, it's more complex when you do the Nicaragua or the Dominican or the Brazilian. But if you have somebody that can tell you to guide you, you will appreciate it a lot, a lot when you do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I don't know if you don't remember the brand on Tame. You remember that brand? Which one was that again? On Tame. Untamed. Oh yes, yes, the Untamed. Those were there was oh, the yeah, Untamed, yeah, yeah. Untamed Extreme. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. My brother, I don't know what happened with that friend in the state. Uh, was we win uh, two pri uh, prize for that? Two. One uh, uh, prime for that one uh, because the best cigar of the year in Dominican. Also, the best uh, tobacco uh, guys in the year, the best master blender. That's what me. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. When we do that cigar, very nice cigar. Look. 
very nice cigar, but mm. I think it was too expensive when we came to the, mm. to the market. Because we're watching a limited edition, watch a regular cigar, so right. people, too long, people all the time want to save uh, his money. And that was that was a uh, that was a broad, that was a broad another broad leaf. Si, 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 si. Yep, yep. Yeah, because I start to uh, to be fall in love with the broad leaf. Bro. <laughs> yeah. So we we came with the preferido black diamond. We came yep. with the one of seven Maduro. Huh? One of seven Maduro that used that wrapper. Also, we bring the cien años Maduro with that wrapper. I think. And the Maduro side, for me, uh, is the best Maduro. Then we start to improve with the San Andres because I know a lot of people use the San Andres and they call it that coming from another place. But it's San Andres. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I think with that cigar, those cigars, I remember they were coming along at a time where it was right before FDA and there was so much hitting the market with those See, cigars. Yeah, uh, that, 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 yeah. That's out of the line because the lion was aggressive. Yeah, design, graphic design. Yeah, aggressive. It's another, uh, another thing. You know, in yeah. terms of uh, a, a view, you know, in terms of cigars, a very a unique cigar too. Yeah. And the extreme and the untamed were two completely different blends, from what I I remember. Yeah, but uh, let it tell me. Let, let me tell you. Uh, I was working to do a stream more strong, more power. I use a lot of Ligero in it for every basis. But brother, I know can get the strength. But more, <laughs> more, more uh, smooth, more full flavor, but less power. Right, right. That, that, that wasn't not the intention. The intention was to do something to kill people. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, no, I remember those. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, I mean, I remember it did get a lot of accolades. Not you saying that. Yeah, but in the states, you're right. It didn't really take off in the states. Uh, and I think it was like the time may have not been right for it because of um. You know, again, that was when everyone was trying to get stuff to market with FDA at that time. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we come in a, a new Maduro. That's in the market now. Is on the time capsule line. Uh, on the eighty five. Yeah. 1985, right? It's a San Andreas wrapper. Uh, people love it, brother. Every part of the world. It's not big, big uh, power cigar, but it's strange, similar strain. It's not big, big one. But, uh, brother, full flavor. Yeah. Full flavor. And, have, and you try, have you tried it? Yeah, my, my two favorites in the time capsule are, are the Maduro and, and the Cameroon. Yeah, the Cameroon is fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's I, fantastic. I, I love the uh, the Maduro and the Coro. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, and, and they're great. They're great value points. Um, I mean, I could tell you the local store when they brought La Aurora in for the first time, they kind of started with those lines, and then they started moving with the more premium lines. But it, a lot of people gravitated to those lines as everyday smokes um, at my local shop when La Aurora came in. Yeah, yeah, uh, we understand the new generation, bro. Yeah. Bass, you can pay whatever you want for a good or a bad cigar. Yeah. Okay? Now yeah. the new generation uh, is thinking in money. Yeah. He want a very nice cigar, but cheap. Yep. Yeah. But when you have a very good cigar, you know, have a, you know, make question. You pay for that because yep. Yep. it's a great, great cigar, too. I agree, agree. Um, you also you also did a project. Um, this is you did the project for Carl Malone as well. What was it like working with Carl Malone? Oh, <laughs> the the main man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, uh, we meet uh, somebody. You know, we uh, we uh, we are the owner of President Beer, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, one ambassador of the President Beer was traveling all over the world in the state, tried to introduce him, trying to introduce the, the beer in the state. Thank God we are most of the state over there. Um, so one day, I come along, go to that ambassador and say, hey, 
I know you are this weird beer, but I love cigar. I want to come to the island. And he said, oh, no, I will bring to the Leon family, the owner of the, of the beer, that they also do cigar. Okay. They came to the factory, meet Guillermo Leon. And he said, I want to do something unique for me, uh, my pun. So we start together to work with uh, different type of blend. He fell in love with the blends that were not the blend, the tobacco inside to the the tobacco to the wrong body. Mm -hmm. So he wanna came, he tastes the cinano, he taste the barrel age, he taste. So he came the first time and spent three days. Then he came every month to, to <laughs> see the factory, to work in it, to be involved for one year, my brother, for one year. Then we start to develop and create it together his, uh, his baby. But to be according for the FDA rules, we decide to use the name, because he was a grandfather, Barrel A. Oh, okay, uh, yes, yes, our old barrel is, yeah. Yeah, you know, we do the very yeah, unique cigar. Yeah, yeah. See, they say I have a lot of brand, but we have to think in a, uh, twice to bring it back. Yeah. Uh, maybe much better, maybe worse. For sure, more better. Because now we have a more experience, you know. But, you know, all the time, the, 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 the weather brings a lot. So he was involved with the barrel age, and he, when he decided that blend, he said, okay, I think it's a good one. Uh, you do a main, uh, you do a very good shoot. So we do together the blend, and then, you know, now he's promoting uh, all over the world. Also, he he taking care of our rum. You know, with a beer producer rum, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Have you tried to uh, in Dominican? Yes, I did. When I was down there, I did. What did you think about that? I loved it. I loved it. I didn't, you know, and I never had Dominican rum before. Uh, that was like my first time, that was my first experience with it. It was fantastic. And, um, you know, I was, and then he, yeah, you, you're just, he's distributing it now for you guys. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. working with, with, because he's falling in love. As soon as yeah. you came to La Aurora, people are uh, uh, engaged. Yeah. You know, I've really seen a lot of people for the basketball, for the football. Yeah. They want to uh, came to see what it is. They want to do brands, you know. But we have an agreement with uh, Carl. Need to be under his umbrella because he was the first. Right. So we are a people of words. We don't have to sign in nothing. If you say, if, if you be agree with something, that will be for all time, my brother. Yeah. Yep. I I I agree. Yep. It was like I said, you you guys did the pairing that day too, which was which was great. It it really did pair well. Um, and you kind of I loved how you kind of went through the different ways to pair it. You know that did, that made it that made the experience better as well because there's certain oh, yeah, ways yeah. you want to pair that. Yeah. See, see that that wrong is made just for a smoker. It's not a drink that you can get in every places. Yeah. It's a uh, something to be to do pairing. Yeah. Because we find out that uh, people smoke a lot of cigar. But in, a, in, a, in one point of his life, he want to share his cigar with some drink. Um, you can use wine, another can use uh, bourbon, uh, another could be whiskey. So why don't, why we don't, know, don't do a nice drink for our cigar? So we start to warn this uh, in a run to match with every single cigar premium that we produce. And then we find out that we very well with the competition too. So we are so happy that the competition can use it too. That's great. And he, and he oh, by the way, I, I had a chance to interview him. He is, he loves your factory. I mean, he told me straight, he said in the interview, I'm only working with La Aurora is what he said. Um, oh yeah. So, yeah, oh, yeah. He is very loyal back on that. That was very he, clear. He, he very engaged with the, with the company because yeah. he see the family, you know, we don't be a factory like uh, usually factory that is exist. Most of the factory want to make business. Yep. Business 
of course, we want to make business, but it's not the, the point. We want to be do family, family. Yeah. So uh, every place that I go to show, to, to introduce my uh, my cigar, my cigars, it's matter of, of, of family, you know. Yeah. He's he, he happy when they come. He feel his like he, like home. He don't want to yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, Manuel, the one thing I've noticed about La Aurora, maybe in particular with you, is you do a lot of private labels and you work with a lot of these new uh, people in the cigar industry. You seem, is, is that something you, you seem to enjoy that from, from, I guess, what I've seen on the outside, is it, uh, working with some of these newer guys, uh, you know, developing blends for them as well? Yeah, yeah. We do a lot of private labels. People want to come to, to, to see the high, to work together, you know, yeah. no, it's nothing that I have available. They want to be involved. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone right. want to be uh, like a, a, yeah. uh, a blaster blend. Yeah. So they want to create his own baby. So we give him some help. We have a lot of private labels to, uh, that way. For premium, also for flavor cigar. You know, flavor are very popular too. Yeah. Oh, oh absolutely. 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 Um, because the technology that we have from uh, cigarettes, you know, with that we produce in the past, uh, mm -hmm. we had still produce a Philip Morris company that we do the Marlboro cigarettes. Oh, wow. So we are very equipment to mix it up about the flavors. Uh, we are unique yeah. uh, in flavors, yeah. Yep. Okay, Manuel, I got one more question for you, and then I just want to mention my experience with the cigar here. Um, Aaron, did you have anything else before that? No, you're good. Okay. Okay. So this is our cattle baron steak question of the night. Manuel, do you like steaks? Like a good steak? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. Tell us, tell our audience the best steak to get in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> My brother, have you been in the, uh, La Parrillita sometime? I have not. I had to bring the, uh, it's, uh, it's no international steak. I think Brother, you only can get it here is the churrasco. It's a, a criollo churrasco. But okay. now, that's for me and the people that try. He love it. But you know, people want to get so exciting. So you have one steak right here that they call it is, uh, tomahawk. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. That, that's the one. It's very popular. Every single tourist that came here in Santiago. But I don't see it in the capital. I don't see it in other places. Even in your place. And you know, yeah. I know you are very good in state. Uh, but nothing like the churrasco or the tomahawk that we put. We... <laughs> oh, all right. I've got this marked down. It's on this video. So that has got to be my next uh, to try for sure. Yeah, but for sure, the one that you have to try uh, outside of the state, it is. Uh, the pork, the ro roasted pork, you know. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I invite you to go to, to eat it. Oh, it's very, right. like very, uh, very unique uh, type of uh, pork food. Yeah. Nice. That's great. That's great. All right. To wrap it up, I want to mention what we're uh, smoking tonight, or what I'm smoking tonight. is sponsored by uh, Tailored Smoke, located in the heart of downtown Charlotte's Epicenter. And now the Charlotte Motor Speedway area in Concord, North Carolina. Tailored Smoke is your one-stop shop for Tailored Smoking Experience. So, Manuel, I, I just – I have a little more left on my uh, C9 inch Maduro. Uh, it's off the charts. I, I, this is just – it's flavor, balance, complexity, everything I want out of a cigar, great construction. Uh, it, it, this is the cigar, my Desert Island cigar here. Um, I can do an interview with you, and I still enjoy it, even though maybe I'm focusing on the interview – um, just a great, great cigar. And you made me very happy to hear that we may be seeing some more sizes of this down the road. Cause I've been waiting for some more sizes to try of this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We became soon though. Uh, we'll be, uh, uh, available uh, soon. As that we, uh, register every single thing for the FDA, we'll be ready to go. There you go. There you go. Awesome. All right, man. Um, Aaron, you couldn't smoke tonight, unfortunately. So yeah. Yeah. We'll, have to, we'll have to give you a rain check on that. But, yeah. uh, Maybe we have to bring it to my house to smoke whatever he wants. There you there go. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I'll, <laughs> I'll take we, that up. We can do the interview together from here. That's we, perfect. We may have to do that. I, I'm in. We're in. 
<laughs> okay, you are welcome to. <laughs> yeah, nice. thank you. Manuel, uh, you know, we kept you a little longer than, than, than we said we would. I want to thank you very much for uh, being a part of the show tonight. Uh, th this was great. Uh, learned a lot tonight. Um, so we do appreciate that and all the support we've gotten from everyone at La Aurora. I'm so happy that you love the, uh, our product. I'm so happy you are smoking the Cien Años Maduro. Uh, for sure, we will continue and do a good job for you, uh, for, for the customer. You know, we want to be in in every single uh, space that we got in the state. For this reason, we have so many uh, brands and so many different uh, profile flavors for each people to choose to choose in the, our cigar. Thank you to bring me tonight to your show. I love to be here. I can wait. I can be the whole night talking with you yeah. about. Cigar. Well, we will, we will definitely uh, look forward to more discussion with that. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon um, down the road with everything going on. Uh, I'm sure we'll see each other at some point. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Uh, all you. right. Thank, Thank you, you Ma brother. That's Manuel Anoa, the master blender of La Aurora Cigars. He was our featured guest tonight on the primetime show. And with that, um, we are going to take a commercial break and we'll get into our next segment. Um, we'll mention JRE Tobacco. The authentic Corolla leaf is one of the most robust and flavorful leaves out there. During the golden age of cigars, it was leaf of choice to make some of the world's greatest cigars. Because it is one of the most challenging ones to cultivate, it fell out of favor by the 1990s. In the Hamastron Valley in Honduras, Julio Arroyo took on the challenge of growing Corolla from the original seeds. And in 2000, he successfully reintroduced authentic Corolla back to the market. With over 50 years experience in the tobacco business, from growing and curing tobacco to cigar production, the Jerry Tobacco Farm has been able to continue to deliver products to market with authentic Corolla. Now with Jerry Tobacco, Julio and his son Huso bring their very own brand to market, each containing the authentic Corolla leaf. Tatascan offers a mild to medium cigar in Connecticut and Abano. Rancho Luna is a premium medium cigar available in Abano and Maduro. And Aladino is available in a 100% authentic Corolla Puro. San Andreas Maduro, Ecuadorian Connecticut shade, and Cameroon wrapper representing the golden age of cigars from 1947 to 1961. Now available at your local retailer. Be sure to ask for Jerry Tobacco, a legacy that's tasted in every draw. And by Toscano Cigars. Toscano Cigars, as rustic and strong as the people who smoke them, try the Toscano's rustic and full body flavors and aromas. Made in Italy, 100% dark fire cured tobacco from the United States and Italy. It's one of the best selling cigars in the world. Toscano cigars are the perfect combination of American and Italian craftsmanship, whether in the traditional long format or the short format Toscanello. Toscano cigars are dry cured, handmade, and fire cured for your enjoyment anytime, anywhere. Visit your local premium cigar retailer today and look for Toscano cigars today. And by A.J. Fernandez Cigars. A.J. Fernandez's New World is a brand named in honor of the discovery of tobacco by Christopher Columbus's expedition in 1492. Fernandez collaborated with his father, Ishmael, on the cigar, which is compromised of a wrapper from Nicaragua that covers binder from the Jalapa Valley and a filler blend of Onmeteke, Condega, and Esteli tobaccos. The Coraline line dated in 2014, and it was followed by New World Connecticut, New World Pura Especial, and New World Cameroon. All four blends are able to captivate the palate of any cigar smoker. If you are beginning to discover the fine world of premium handmade cigars, New World Connecticut's for you. If you're into the rich full body blends, Pro Specials for you. And if you're into complex flavors, the New World Cameroon is for you. If you're into robust and earthy flavors with notes of espresso, the New World Oscuro is definitely for you. Visit AJFCigars.com to learn more. And by M. Bombay Cigars. M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by one of the world's most experienced cigar levels, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try M. Bombay, Gaia, M. Cuba, and the new M. S. Lee line. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. And by Alec Bradley Cigars, Alec Bradley is a family company. Alan Rubin named the company after his two sons, Alec and Bradley, when they were just little tykes. Now they're all grown up walking alongside their dad, making the best damn cigars you ever smoked. Join the family. Try one today. Learn more at alecbradley.com. So we're going to get into our Alec Bradley Live True segment, uh, sponsored by um, Alec Bradley. <laughs> um, so... I guess this team, Aaron, we, I know we've talked a while about doing something on spirits, and we'll probably do, like, more focused shows maybe at some point. Yeah. But, you know, I've kind of been on this little kick lately. You know, I'm not the, yeah. I'm not the drinker, but, um, you know, I've started acquiring a bunch of spirits, um, and I'm a newbie with a lot of this stuff right mm -hmm. now. Um, but I've been getting some various things, trying some different things right now. 
Um, and I'm kind of having a lot of fun. I'm spending a lot of money on it, though. Yes, it's not, um, it's not a cheap. Uh, it's not a cheap. This <laughs> stuff, yeah. This, I mean, so I st- I've recently been stocking up a cabinet at home right now. Um, I'm probably gonna have to actually do something like more of a bar right now because I'm, I've I've filled up a lot of it. Um, so I wanted to just kind of go through, you know, some, some types of spirits that we may enjoy, uh, maybe some that are overrated and some that are underrated as well. Sure. Um, you know, to kind of go through some of that. Um, Aaron, I'll start off with you. What, what kind of spirits do you normally like gravitate towards? Uh, I usually gravitate towards, um, scotch, uh, or, um, rum. Those are maybe some of the two most frequent. Um, and I like I like a peated scotch uh, a little bit more than uh, you know Highland, um, but um, I do. T- I like the peated. I mean that the Lafora was a great example. Yeah, I, I, I like that a lot. Yeah, and I, you know some people. I think it's it's a very polarizing uh, kind of uh, profile. So um, some people really love it. Some people can't stand it. Um, it's, it's really you don't have like kind of a in between kind of a thing. It's like either it's, it's for you or it's not for you. But right. um, yeah, when I got when I started trying scotch, I kind of started on the, the peated side, and I loved it right away. Which is, you know, I think some people say that's probably not how it typically happens for people. They'll, you know, they'll yeah. start with an unpeated scotch and then kind of work their way up to it. But um, I was kind of caught right from the beginning from it, so and so I liked it a lot. But um, on the rum side, I, I definitely prefer a, a, a sweeter rum. Um, so I, you know, I have a bit of sweet tooth, so um, I definitely dig like a. a you know, a kind of a thicker, more viscous, sweet, sweet type of rum. So right. That's where I focus at. Is there a country of origin that you prefer your rum out of? Um, not necessarily. Um, yeah, I don't think country of origin is necessarily uh, an important aspect for me. It's really the kind of the, just a, a sweeter expression that I would gravitate towards. Yeah, yeah. So you know, my 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 oldest son, he's twenty five. You know, he 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 has a little bar in his room, right? You know, he's not an mm-hmm. alcoholic or anything, right? And I'm <laughs> I'm in there one day, and and I see Captain Morgan in there. Right? Yeah. I'm like, you you drink that? He goes, yeah. It's uh, you know, he said you haven't drank a lot of it. He goes, it's good, yeah. I mean, so then I I gave him some of the Santiago rum from Cuba. There you go. Uh and. Yeah, now now he's, now he's drinking out of your bottle. Yeah, now he's drinking out of my <laughs> bottle. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Captain Morgan's fine for for mixing. I mean, if you're gonna yeah. do a rum and coke or something like that. Yeah, you know. I, and I was gonna mention, I am more of a guy who prefers the spirit st- straight. Kind of, I sure. want to taste the spirit for what it is right now. Right. Um, I'm not against like a rum and coke or Cuba Libre or anything like that, but no. but in general, I kind and I'm not a. And here's the other thing: I don't like things on the rocks. It dilutes it to me. Yeah, I think that's. Um, yeah, there's. I think there's different, you know, thoughts on how to how to enjoy a spirit. Um, yeah. You know, there's people that say yeah, you have to drink it straight. Uh, there's people that love to have it um, with you know an ice cube or multiple ice cubes in there. Some people like just to add a little bit of water. Right. Um, but I think it's it, it's okay, however you choose to do it. Um, it's just whatever, you, and it's great to experiment. Right. You know, try it straight. If it's you know if it's some if it's a cast strength bourbon, and it you know it, you know burns your sinuses because there's so much heat to you know alcohol level um feel free to add a little water try it out then if not put an ice cube in there and let it kind of mellow a little bit more i mean it's it's whatever you want to do there's not like you can only drink it this way and then you have to either drink it or don't drink it that way you can it's, it's uh, a lot of experimentation that you can do with uh, spirits yeah no that's that's a good point that's a good uh, i was looking at uh, alan rubin in the chat room he made a comment actually i agree with him on this it's not really a spirit I've found a lot of craft beers to be overrated. Maybe I haven't found the right one. So I'm not saying I'm not trying to put a blanket statement in it, but yeah. most of the craft beers I've had have been disappointing is what I'm just going to say. Yeah. I mean, there's, there is definitely good craft beer out there. But yeah. There is, there are so many breweries that are pumping out so many beers that right. the bulk of them you would think are like, they're just okay or they're not that great, but there's, there's, there's a lot of choices if you if you want good craft beer though. Yeah, I mean, it, you know what's funny is um when um why am I drawing about the, the Dragon's Milk beer? Right. Yeah. I when they did that when when Lazuka did that Dragon's Milk cigar, I fell in love with that that actually. Yeah. I, I thought that was a great great drink. I didn't think I would like it, and I really did. Yeah, I mean, it's um it's kind of a unique. A it was unique just unique, yeah. Beer, yeah. It's got like yeah, a, you, you know definitely thick a thickness to it, and yeah. Uh, 
kind of the creaminess to it. So yeah, uh, yeah. But I don't know. I, like I said, it's probably me. I haven't. Ex- this is not me saying I hate all craft beers. Um, it's just I probably haven't like maybe not like you. It's certainly not like a Rob Rasmus and uh, Randy. You know who they kind of live this stuff a lot more. I'm, I'm sure that someone can gravitate me towards a good craft beer. I just I've been more disappointed with them. Yeah. than not uh is what I'm my saying. recommendation would be if you go to some place that does have craft like i would say i recommend like bars or restaurants that have good craft beer selections mm-hmm. just get flights don't book don't get a full beer of anything yeah. just get a flight of like whatever they offer four or five six whatever it is tasters and right try just a variation of stuff like for me in beer drinking i much prefer just to taste rather than right. like drink full beers because yeah. like you know I like to just try different stuff. So yeah, uh, you can hop between you know different styles. You can t- hop between sours and stouts and IPAs and whatever it is. So you get you get a nice mixture. And I yeah. always prefer to the very you know the variation rather than yeah um, sticking with something solid. Yeah, that would be a good point as well. Um, I tend to with beers. I tend to gravitate to the Belgian the Belgian whites. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. just that's just me. Um, but uh, so and and but I've had some dark beers I've liked some I but again some I haven't. Um, so. Right. I've, sometimes I find them a little too stout for me, but that may again that's I maybe just have to find the right one. It's um, I'm not saying I like you know I hate all dark beers either. Yeah, I mean um, there's like you know people are gonna set you know think like uh, you know this is a kind of a big big brand beer, but like Guinness is a stout, but it's very low level in regards to alcohol, yeah. um, and it's not as thick as some of these you know the craft beers you know barrel aged stouts and things like that. So there's there's hu- there are huge you know there's a huge like area that you can go through even in a single style of beer and there's you know there's so many that are now like um kind of hybrids of different styles that there's just it's like a never-ending combination of things that you can uh try yeah yeah um and he also mentioned as far as underrated goes uh mike's hard lemonade i don't know if that's a spirit and whipped cream vodka is that it i'll get to, I'll get, I'll get to that in a minute okay <laughs> Okay. I thought it was an Ezra Zion cigar for a second. Oh, I'm sure. Your yeah. Will be I, I, yeah. I mean, as far as like overrated goes, I'm not a big gin drinker. I, I just mm. haven't um, gotten into gin for whatever reason. Right. Uh, I know Dojo was mentioning like gin and tonic as a great summer drink. I don't see it. Not that, yeah. you know, I'm not, and I know I'm not a fan of it, but gin to me is not a, I don't know. It's, I find it too drying on me sometimes. I'm a big gin fan. I'm actually drinking some gin right now. Well, um, well, go ahead. I had boost. I had boost gin, and it's it's really good. I'll say that. Yeah. And I'm not a ginger. Boost gin is fantastic. Yeah, Mass yeah. Boost Room One and, One. Uh, yeah. You know, gin is another thing that there's such there's been such a, like a boom in regards to people making gin, and yeah. there's different variations. It's the different botanicals people are adding to it and things like that. So um, there's lots of different things that you can do to try it out. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I'm I'm in agreement with Eric that gin cocktails are are fabulous summer cocktails. He you know he seems to prefer the gin and tonic but um i prefer what's called a gin buck which is uh you know gin and ginger ale and you can make it real that, ginger ale, not like that would be really good yeah that's something I'm... um and you also put a little bit of lime juice in there and it's a uh, it's a very refreshing drink so um, yeah but um yeah it just depends on what you think and, and gin in a mixed drink is definitely tonic's a little different because it's you're not the tonic is really just adding a little a kind of a a compliment to it i guess mm-hmm. not really a flavor changer right so um but yeah if you would if you did gin with something else um you know like ginger beer or ginger ale or something like that uh, definitely some interesting combinations there that that's something i would like to try actually i mean i've had the ginger beers are very interesting too they're very they're very potent potent yeah <laughs> yes. but but now i'm kind of thinking with that that would be that would be very interesting as well um and then i still think irish whiskeys are underrated right now I, i'm a big irish whiskey guy that was probably one of the drinks i, I mean i taught more doors do is probably one i've had the most of over the years even before i yeah, kind of started this collection i don't think i drink irish whiskey outside of uh around st patrick's day so right um it's just not not something i gravitate towards i guess yeah. i mean i'm I, could, I would drink it if it was around me just i don't have any of it when i'm you know at somebody else's house that's usually not something that was really kind of around or uh, you know hanging around right right that's true um i've been to a couple of distill i haven't been to a lot of distilleries i mean um we have one called defiant here in in, in mm-hmm. north carolina it's, it, they uh they use uh 
they use spirals. They put spirals mm-hmm. into the vats there, as opposed to aging them in barrels. And yep. I found it to be a re- really good, uh, really good um, whiskey. Yeah. 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 Yep. So I mean, those like I said, I would say probably like maybe I have to do more work on the gin. I think gin's overrated in my book, and Irish whiskey is kind of underrated in my book. But that may show what a rookie I am with this as well. No, I mean it's just what you have. Uh exposure to so and, yeah uh, like you said you tried the, the room 101 gin you kind of and you like it so. I, I liked it yeah and there's, it there's a lot of stuff out there that you can try and see yeah and i wasn't just saying that because it was funny because that night i had room 101's 10th anniversary cigar and i, I really didn't like it as much as, as the yeah. gin so yeah. i wasn't I, I didn't have my matt boy fan fanboy hat on by any means yeah um but yeah no i thought it was pretty good too yeah i would say a spirit that another spirit that i would consider that's underrated is um tequila um and I'm referring more to like the Anejo style tequilas. So, um, you know, barrel aged stuff and things like that. There's a lot of complexity to be found in tequila. And it's, a, I'm talking like sipping tequila, not taking shots because there's no reason to drink anything that has any good flavor to it if you're just taking shots. So, yeah. um, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, so I think tequila is definitely underrated. I would say vodka is very overrated. I mean, yeah, I, the, most, the goal I, of vodka is to have zero flavor. So if you're drinking it for that, whatever, but then there's all these tons of flavored vodkas, which you're kind of dr- drinking candy, I guess, at that point. Yeah, I mean, uh, Brian Musar from Cattle Baron has the flavored vodka, the cranberry one. It's very good. Mm-hmm. That that one I got from um, Hammer and Sickle, it it seemed it didn't seem like that unflavored vodka. It, it seemed to have some flavor to it. Right, right which I actually liked, I could drink that straight. And actually I didn't feel, and it wasn't assaulting the palate, but it wasn't like drinking air either. Right. Yeah. 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 So that, that was, um, that was that one as well. Um, so yeah, they, the, um, you know, like I said, some, some of these, I, I've just kind of been, ex- I, and a lot of people have just given me suggestions on things to buy now more of, which is kind of interesting. Um, I mean, I'm definitely learning that all bourbons aren't created equal. I'm, I'm definitely right. seeing that. Yeah. Um, you were mentioning the tequila. Um, have you ever had Senior Rio? No. Sounds familiar. It's, but Yeah, so Senior Rio, it's a, it was owned by a husband and wife company out of Arizona. And they actually did a cigar with AJ Fernandez to pair with it. Okay. Um, so we had them on Stogie Geeks. Uh, and their tequila... They have a they have a regular straight tequila, but then they have um they have a coffee infused one, which I was surprised I really liked oh, that. Interesting. Yeah, the, the unfortunate the husband died. The wife's still mm-hmm. running the company. Uh, but we had them on a couple of times. They they were really good guests actually. Um nice. it was just really entertaining. Like I said, the product was really good um that they that they that they had. Um and they do have it out in the east. Um I have to get it's not cheap. It's not cheap by any means, but but most people who know Paul knew a lot more about tequila than me, and he was saying that stuff was really good. Right. So, yeah. Uh, they had a nice cigar. I, I, the cigar was being sold at the Total Wines for a while. Uh, it was an AJ blend. Um, you know, it wasn't anything I'd say that was a cigar of the year, but it was, it was a solid cigar. I mean, I could say that, that they got. Right. So, uh, yeah. Um, any other liquors maybe I should be exploring that I'm not exploring right now? Liquors? Um... That I, I know on a little spending spree maybe with. Uh, I don't know. I I have I have a nice selection of uh Grand Marnier. And yeah, ha- that, that's like I said. You, I know you drink Grand Marnier. I love, I love that stuff. So yeah, yeah. anything like that um, is nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the winter time, I like to get um like coffee liqueur and just uh like whipping cream. <laughs> just uh, mix that up and just go to go to town. So the whipped cream vodka? No. No, 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 no. No whipped cream vodka. Yeah. Uh I'm not yeah, I'm not interested in doing like a white Russian with that vodka too. Yeah. It's just, that's not my not my thing. So Yeah, I you know what's funny? I like the white Russian without the vodka. I like it yeah, just so with the cream. I, I like Kahlua, it just like the Kahlua and the cream and just the Kahlua and the cream, yeah. yeah. Uh and that, here's a little variation for you. Add some um club soda to that uh-huh and uh it's adds a nice little uh fizz. a little fizz to it yeah yep a little fizz to it it's pretty nice yeah i mean oh, the, the smith and kearns okay yeah because i mean i was watching you know uh big lebowski and i'm like all right i gotta i gotta try this but then someone told me to try it without the vodka exactly it's, and, and I, I found it to be very it's so much better without the vodka. it's so much better without the vodka <laughs> maybe it goes back to what you're saying yeah yep. yeah like uh so the, yeah that's uh 
That's pretty good. Yeah, and the Southern Comfort's also a nice drink too. I, I've always liked that. Okay. That's one you mix that with Seven Up or uh, Sprite or whatever. It's actually really good. I don't think I've yeah. ever tried Southern Comfort. Yeah, it's, 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 check it out. It's not bad. They have they have like spiced ones. I think you want the basic Southern Comfort is what I'd recommend. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm not into the spiced liquors at all. So. Hmm. So yeah, let me know if folks have any other suggestions that I could uh, start building up this bar here. Um, the funny thing is, my wife's like, "You're not drinking this." I have like one, you know. I don't, I don't yeah. drink. It's not changing my drinking habits, just so you know. Yeah. But I'm like, it looks nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Anything else we want to hit on spirits? I'm sure we could do a lot of shows on these different. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff we do on yeah. spirits, but I think we're good for. Enough. All right. Awesome. Uh, so we'll get into our final segment here, um, and I want to mention Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. Master Blender set out. Uh, Master Blender Steve Sock has set out to create pros and compromisos, cigars without compromise. This represents an expression of, of Sokka's close scale values, and it tests in three simple words everything Sokka wants to accomplish. Cigars are more than a passion of Sokka, they are a way of life. Ants for the brand of Dumbarton Tobacco and Tusk, Sobra Misa, Mikuita, Umbagog, Moist for the Sokka, Todos Los Dios, and Sin Compromiso, your local tobacconist. And by Miami Cigar and Company. Nesta Miranda said it best there is a mystery and depth to Africa that captivates my spirit. Always drawing me to come back. This cigar, Don Lino Africa, captures the way going there makes me feel. Cigar making is an art form, but in the moment when you have the cigar and it becomes art itself, you have something special. Don Lino Africa returns to Miami Cigar and Company. The brand you remember blended even more masterfully this time in partnership with Tabacalera AJ Fernandez. An exotic complex blend meant to mesmerize. It's available in five box press for tours. Don Lino Africa returns. Ask for it at your local retailer. And by J.C. Newman Cigar Company. Founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, the J.C. Newman Cigar Company is the oldest family-owned premium cigar maker in America. For four generations and 124 years, J.C. Newman has been handcrafting many of the world's finest cigars. J.C. Newman is headquartered in an iconic 109-year-old cigar factory in the Ybor City National Historic Landmark District in Tampa, Florida. At this factory known as Elwer Hall, J.C. Newman rolls premium cigars by hand and hand-operated antique machines. The J.C. Newman Pensa factory is the second largest in Nicaragua, and it's where Brickhouse, Perla de Mar, El Baton, and Quorum cigars are hand-rolled. J.C. Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade by Tobacco Lair, A. Fuente in the Dominican Republic. With its longtime partners, the Arturo Fuente family, the Newmans have founded the Scar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low-income families in the Dominican Republic with education, health care, vocational training, and clean water. Visit jcnewman.com to learn more. And by Casa Cuevas Cigars, the Cuevas family has four generations of experience in cigar making. For many years, they have manufactured cigars for many industry leaders at an Las Lavas factory in the Dominican Republic. Now, the Cuevas family brings their very own brand to market with Casa Cuevas Cigars. Try the Casa Cuevas Connecticut, the Casa Cuevas Habano, Casa Cuevas Maduro, as well as the recently released Cuevas Reserva line. If they don't carry it, be sure to ask your old Gortillo for Casa Cuevas Cigars. Casa Cuevas Cigars from our casa to yours. And by Cigar Marketplace. Cigar Marketplace is the first B2B premium cigar and accessories online broker that connects premium cigar suppliers to retailers, simplifying the way our industry does business. Retailers can now directly order from the suppliers they want without the wait, getting the customers the brands they demand. Wholesalers no longer need to uh, wait uh, going store to store to find the retailer that fits their brand. This allows also retailers to enjoy a one-stop shopping experience to all their store needs. With an optional monthly subscription of $39.95, this allows members to benefit from all order-free shipping, 40% off second-day air rates, 2.5% cash back every six months, refer a firm program, set discount, off 10, uh, set discount of 10% off naked bundles, and exclusive weekly deals. And non-members can also take advantage of, of Cigar Marketplace's exclusive deals, plus free shipping on orders over $750. Visit www.cigarmarketplace.co to learn more. So we're going to get into our deliberation segment um, and um, got a couple of topics tonight. Um, we'll go in order, I guess, with these um, to start this out. Um, and I just lost my notes here. Okay. So did you, we actually talked about this a bit. Um, we do a lot of like, um, we do a lot of media panel shows and I, and I always think um, they're, they're some of the favorite shows that I think we've had over the years doing this. Right. Um, so I saw, a couple weeks ago, uh, the TLE podcast had on um, a couple of guests. They had on the Sultans of Swing guys. Sultans of Swing. Uh, Sultans of Smoke. I'm sorry. I'm thinking <laughs> Dire Straits. Uh, Sultans of the Smoke. Um, and they had on the, the Hot Ticket. Uh, and there are two podcasts I enjoy them both listening to, uh, all, yeah. all of them, okay? Um, and I was, I, was, I was really excited because um, when media kind of gets together, 
and I know people don't like it when I talk media, but I do media. I think you do media, so we're always yeah. interested in this. Um, so I'm going to preface this by saying, Danny Vasquez, I'm not mad at you, but I have a different point on something that was taken on this. Um, and I want to kind of discuss this. So you heard the podcast, right? Yep. So there was a point where, uh, and Danny's with the Sultans of Smoke guys. Uh, so he's, mm -hmm. so Danny comes from that background. And by the way, Danny's Voyage Cigar was made by Manuel and Noah. We right. Mentioned that. A really good cigar. But um, the whole topic started coming up about sponsorships. Mm -hmm. And it caught my attention immediately when I heard that. Um, and, and Danny gave an opinion on that that I didn't agree with. I don't know what your take is, but, um, you know, I kind of talked about when guys start selling sponsorship with their media brands, it's almost like they, they lose their fair word passion and, right. <laughs> um, and they sell out and then, you know, they compromise themselves yeah. and it's, it's nothing new that was said. Um, and I'll even say this, it's, I don't have a problem with Danny saying it. Sure. Um, but I have a, I have a very different angle that I think needs to be presented with this tonight that I don't think he addressed with that. Give you some thoughts on that before I kind of get into what I was thinking. Yeah. I mean, I heard what he said and I, I didn't really agree with it. I actually made a comment on the, on the show when he had uh, said it, but, um, yeah, yeah, I have a different, different thought on it. So I'm, I'm curious to hear what you say. I don't, I don't want to take any thunder from you. If you no, you never, you never do. No, no. So feel free to go ahead and I'll chime uh, in then. Okay. Um, first of all, I'll say this. I, and I heard some comments on the podcast that some of the podcasts are either very limiting their sponsorship or not even approaching the sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And my first comment is if, if you can have a podcast and you could finance it um, or a media brand or anything, go for it. Okay. There, there is nothing wrong with that. I don't, I don't look down on that. Um, I, I think, I, I had to do it for, I did it with Cigar Coop for a couple of years because I wasn't sure where I was taking it. But if you can do that, I have nothing against that. I think it's completely impractical because there's costs to do this stuff. And, and as your audience grows, they start asking for more things. So, but for some reason, this is where I have the problem where, where why this is said. For some reason in this cigar industry, sponsorship is looked upon as something bad. Right. And I don't understand. I, I cannot. I, I, why is it? Maybe I'll get your. Why do you think that is? Because I, I see other mediums. I mean, I'm, I'm doing some stuff now with the music podcast. It's not sure. viewed like that. It, it is like it is viewed like you're doing. It's almost like you're doing something bad if you take a sponsor in people's eyes. Yeah, I think some of it goes back to the whole cigar aficionado advertising for right. ratings kind of a right. thing that people like to kind of harken back to, I guess. Right. And uh, I think that people will, or some people will think that once advertising is accepted, you're, um, you're compromised in regards to how truthful you can be in regards to if you're doing reviews or if you're right. doing commentary or whatever it is. Like you're going to be more biased towards who your sponsor sponsors are to give them good reviews or you're not going to be as critical of them right. as you would be somebody that's not a sponsor of yours. I think that's, that, that's how I envision it kind of coming to fruition. I mean, I'm open to hearing other people's ideas on why they think sponsorship is um, not good for the honesty or the, you know, whatever, however you want to yeah. consider it for the site. So again, I think the, the, the point is a valid point um on that and, and i think you know it's a valid argument i i contend if you're gonna get into the media game the first thing you have to do is you have to be comfortable with sponsorship you have to have a comfort level that now you're bringing sponsors in now people are, are, are taking a bit of a financial interest in what you're doing and you have to now in the end that's part of doing media that every every major media outlet does that, or they're using Patreon, mm -hmm. which I don't want to pass the cost over to our audience. You know, so right. so let people in the cigar. So you got to be comfortable doing that, and you got to be. I mean, Aaron, you and I have been on many, probably more you than me. You've been on. We've we've had sponsors call us up and be unhappy with us. I mean, we've right. had we've all had it happen. Um, and I think the only way we have to do it is we have to just hold our line and, and stick to it. Um, I mean, I can tell you sponsors were mad at the last few years at the coop top top 
countdown. They, they, yeah. will, I mean, I get those calls. People think that countdown's fun. I get more phone calls on that than anything <laughs> at the end of the year or right. messages like, like, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Uh, and usually most cases it's usually your score, score wasn't good enough or, uh, you didn't meet the criteria with the two answers and, and, and you have to be comfortable. I mean, you have to deliver that. That's if you're going to carry sponsor, you have to be able to deliver that message. Yeah. I think you have, um, I would say the one thing is you have to take an inventory of yourself to determine if you can do it either uh, to get away from your personal biases in regards to brands that you like or don't like uh, yeah. as well as sponsors. Um, if you don't think you can get around that uh, for yourself, then you're, you know, it's not going to go well as you kind of go down the road. Um, I think you have to go into it saying like, I got to put these things aside as much as I can to be able to move forward. And um, if you can do that, and you work continually to work at it, you can, and you know, you maintain it and people can view it and see that it's uh, coming off that way. Um, then you're doing a good job. But if you're completely slanted towards things and things like that, you know, you're going to be, you'll be pigeonholed that way and people will take your, um, whatever is your content with a grain of salt. Um, they'll, they'll know where some of your loyalties lie and they'll kind of, have to discount those a little bit and have to wonder how all the rest of them work out. Totally on point. Um, and what I, you know, and again, I kind of go with the coop side of things. Um, and I, again, I'm not trying to, and again, people have to judge if I'm being honest or not, my mm -hmm. words are going to, but the lowest cigar in the history of cigar coop is now a sponsor of cigar coop. Right. So, I mean, I'm just saying it, it, it does happen. Um, and I do hear, I mean, there was another sponsor I signed um, and his first cigar I killed. And after I, then after I signed him, he, he kind of wanted to go back and talk about that cigar. Um, yeah. So, you know, because he actually valued the opinion. So I, I, if you're kind of newer in the media, um, my advice to anyone is if you're taking sponsors on, you just got to be like, you got to just don't worry about, you, you can't let friendships get in the way with this is what I'm going to say. Um, it, and because that is ultimate, you have to manage this when you're, when you're playing the media game and you're playing the sponsorship game, uh, you just have to, you have to manage it, um, accordingly, but let your audience be the ones to decide if you are a, uh, let them to be decided or not, because in the end, your audience has got to be the one to, to trust you or not. And your numbers are going to tell you that. So that's my advice. And so I, like I said, I don't think there's a bad thing with sponsorship. Um, yeah, I mean, not in, yeah, not inherently. There's not something wrong with it. It's only wrong with it something wrong with it when it has an effect on the content of the, the media organization. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you are uh, unless you have the back the financial backing right. uh, personally to you know build the site, uh, curate your content, do all the things that you want to do, sponsorship is you know is the is the way to to make that happen and yep. um the way the way i see it is it's uh sponsors are going to be people that um like what you do uh they believe in what you do they want to see you succeed right. um you know they're you know you're doing an exchange in regards to visibility for them um for for money um but um you know i don't if uh if a sponsor is coming to you to give you money to generate good results. Um, there's a little bit, you know, disingenuous stuff on both sides at that point. If, if that, if that's how the transaction goes, now right. if a sponsor comes in saying, Hey, you know, I, you know, wink, wink, I hope this helps out with some of our scores. It's up to the person taking that on to, to either uh, be upfront with them and say, that's just not how we work. Um, we're happy to take your money, but it will not be an exchange for something like that. No. Um, or they can just refuse the money and right. say, it's, you know, that's not how we do. We're not comfortable accepting your money in regards to that and go down that road. But, yeah. um, you know, everybody has their own reason for uh, doing uh, cigar media type things. So um, you just have to let it sort out. Um, people have to be their own judges. Um, but I think to paint, and I'm not saying this is what Danny was doing, but no, he will. If, if, if you paint the whole, if you paint, you know, people that take sponsors with the same brush, you know, that's not good either. Right. Um, I think you, you have to be, you know, use your own, own eye to right. understand uh, and get a feel for how people work. Uh, you can always see who their sponsors are, look at some of the reviews, see if there's a, a bit of a shift there or whatever. Um, and then you'll be able to kind of create your own point of view in regards to 
who do you think might be a bit biased towards sponsors or not biased towards sponsors? Or you just see other things like just people are biased towards certain brands because they, they're friends with that, some people of that brand, or they just really like those blends and that's what they gravitate towards. And that's what they're going to score high versus other things. So yeah, there's lots of things that you have to kind of keep in mind, in mind to see, you know, where people, you know, where the media site um, kind of leans towards. No, it's very true. That's very true. Um, that kind of leads me to the second part of this thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, so there are a lot of, me, uh, and I'll use, I'll, I'm going to paint the word uh, broad with media here. There's a lot of guys with, with media who, who don't have sponsors. Um, and we've seen this. If you don't have sponsors, right, you're, you're building, I think you're building your brand two different ways. I think one, as we mentioned, you're going to have to either fund it yourself or, or crowdsource it. I don't think there's any way around that, right? But the other thing you need is you need relationships in the industry to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So what I don't, what I don't understand is when there's, when there's the arguments for sponsorship, bias with sponsorship are, are real. I'm not trying to say they don't exist. Um, and, and everyone, like I said, everyone can make their own choice. But how many times have we seen these media guys buddy-buddy with someone in the industry? They smoke mostly their stuff. And I'm not saying anyone on, on that, that media podcast was doing that. I, 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 I don't think that's the case with any of those guys. Um, maybe Danny's smoking a little more Roma, but I understand that, right? <laughs> but, okay. I don't think – but – then you see, then, then we, we've talked about this. Then you have the end of year list that have five cigars from one manufacturer out of 10, right? Yeah. Then you have, uh, you know, that, that's what you start seeing. So then you start seeing, is there, just because you're taking sponsorship, right? Doesn't mean there's not bias out there is my point. There's a lot of bias that goes on with this quote unquote relationship piece yep. that, um, that I feel is very, and you, you can just look at the end of the year list. And you yeah. see that. How many times have people like may have a queue of cigars to go, right? Yeah. And soccer them a little, come out with a cigar, and what do they do? They that queue, they adjust their queue, and they go like, "We got to smoke that and review it." And man, yeah. we're gonna give him a ninety-five, right? Yeah. Like you, you see that. So, I that's where I had the disagreement with Danny. Is yes, there's bias. I'd say with sponsorship, but it's just because you don't have sponsorship. I want to make it clear that it doesn't mean there's not bias because because I see a lot of that going on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I don't think that the sponsorship piece, I don't think plays into it necessarily at all. I mean, uh, you can get into the yeah. media side of yeah. things and you can love a brand and uh, it can show um, and you'll, you'll know it after you read it through some reviews and stuff like that. So um, yeah, bias isn't always generated by dollars. No, no, it definitely. And that's, uh, that's the point I wanted to make with that is uh, if you're going to say, if you're gonna make the comments about sponsorship valid, don't forget about that other piece, which yeah is not as prevalent in other in maybe a little in some but but this this notion of you know i i like this guy yeah so i want to do right by him um you just can't do that either that's that's i think as as wrong as as taking a sponsor's money and 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 getting it's wrong to get a you know bought rating obviously but i think that's just as bad because you're not you're doing a disservice to your audience there yep yep yeah yeah, so um, the last point I wanted to make on this, um, I guess this whole notion of passion, which you and I make fun of Bear on this all the time, sure. right? There's no doubt Bear's a passionate guy, right? Sure. Sure. But listen, the one thing I will agree with Danny on, when this becomes a lot of work, the passion thing does great on you a bit. I'm not going to disagree with that. Yeah. Um, what I will say is you – this is – I know you hate that word, right? You got to have an, I'll just say, you have to have a real interest in doing media to do what we're doing. Right. So yeah. that piece I didn't hear talked about either. And, and I'm going to assume all the people on that podcast, again, if they're doing it out of their own pocket, they, they have an interest in doing this, certainly. Yeah. Um, the Sultans of Smoke's probably the one that's been around the longest, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they've been around. That's, and and Mo, Mo, I should say Mo's also part of that, too. So those yeah. guys, have, a couple of those guys have grown into brand owners and stuff. And I think they've done a, they've done a really good job with that. So, um, so, Danny, I'm not mad at you. I just had a different take. Someone told Danny I was mad at him, right? <laughs> well, we won't go there because you exposed yourself by telling Danny. But, um, but no, I just wanted – I'm not mad, but I, have a very, I had a different take on that, and I wanted to mention that. 
is there anything else you want to mention on that podcast? No, I don't think so. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think those. I think panels are interesting. Yeah. Interesting things. You definitely get different points of view on things. Yeah. Um, no, well, I, I, so like I said, and it was kind of cool to see different. They, you know, we have our obviously some of the people we know over the years. We we've done the media shows with. Yeah. It was cool to see three different media outlets do that. So. Yeah. Um, and because there's things I, I may hear, and I, like I said, I disagree with something, and there's other things I agree with it on that. So, yeah, yeah. um, this wasn't to kind of uh bad mouth anyone or anything, but but I, I kind of this thing about it, it, it is a sore spot. This thing about like sponsors and cigars, like it's bad. I, I just, it, you know, that's that's the one thing, and I'm not, you know, that's just that's just my two cents on that. Yeah, I definitely would agree with that. I mean, um, yeah, just if you know if you kind of go into it is that you know we're not we haven't been uh uh messied by you know taking sponsorship dollars so we're we're, we're more pure and things like that that's yeah. that's nobody buys that it, yeah. it doesn't necessarily work that way you know yeah, no um, yeah no now you may have more exposure to the product you may have more um you, you may have more exposure to the principles behind that that's part yeah. of sponsors again you have to balance that out you know um I could tell you, if you go back to Stogie Geeks, I had two sponsors that hated each other and used to say bad things about each other. Yeah. And one of them wanted the other one off. Um, so, um, you know, you have, and the deal is you're either a sponsor or you're not. You know, we're not playing yeah. that game. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the rule. Whatever. This is not, you're, you know, no one's going to intimidate the base on that. So um, that, that's what it is. Yeah, and I, th I would say if, if you feel that somebody is compromised by sponsorship, call them out on it like absolutely uh, that's your you know, job is absolutely don't, don't you know yeah. i don't think it is um you know I, people may people may respond differently in regards to being called out by such things but um you know if somebody feels that they're unbiased but you're right. trying to point out something i think you know sometimes people will uh welcome the feedback so that they understand how they're being perceived um from the outside um so i think that's fine and i i'm I'm completely open. Like uh, I would say, look at the track record of reviews on sites. Um, sponsors don't get any preferential treatment in regards to scoring. Um, <laughs> if you feel that way, please point it out to me so that I can understand. But um, I would, you know, I would say 99% sure that uh, there's, uh, you know, that they there's you wouldn't see any kind of uh, yep. increased scoring for sponsors. Yeah, or read Steve Stocker's thread today, where it was yeah. actually discussed with Aaron and I giving him lower scores. <laughs> right. And there, Steve Stocker is a sponsor of both of us, by the way. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it it is this. I mean, I would, I understand the podcast, the TLE podcast. Maybe they didn't want to call people out. It, maybe it wasn't the nature of the show. It they don't was, like to name names on their show, on their show. Yeah, I, I can understand. I can understand, but but I would say as an audience man, if you're saying you know, because I'll tell you why, I got some criticism this year for Saga being number one and, yeah. and so, look I, all i know is they haven't been number one and now suddenly they're number, no that cigar was a, i just say try the cigar and if you disagree with the cigar let me know i haven't gotten that piece of feedback yet that's saying someone yeah. didn't like the cigar right so um you know that's what i'll just say is, is in the end like you are the it was like when nick perdomo's video on the scoring he's saying mm -hmm. you're the ultimate arbiter that's what that's what it's up to our audience to do that here. exactly so I, I can make my case and you can make your case we're not going to convince you unless unless Ultimately, you you kind of agree or disagree with that, right? Yeah, yep. yep. All right. Ah, uh, let's. You want to hit this? I'll hit the second one. This was Go a fun one. Let's this do was it. A okay. So uh, I'll put an alert out for all Rich Days fanboys. Um, if you want to get us, <laughs> but this is. Gonna, but um, so people have known that I am the person in the cigar industry who has complained about the about the piss ass job this industry does with press releases. How, how we don't get good press releases, how they, how, well, we don't get them at all, right? And I have, I have I'm going to say, I, I don't know if anyone else has waved the flag about this or, or bitched about it as much as me. Would you, if so, someone else let me know, right? I don't think, I think you're the king. I'm the king of that, okay. Yes. Um, I'm not trying to be ego, but if someone else is out there who's, who's done this, let me know. Um, but we had a, like, like, so I'm complaining about not getting the press release from someone. We had a reverse scenario this week that came up yeah. where a company sent out, a, what they call the press release, uh, but it was a minimum press information, and it was sent out to a bunch of uh, media people, yep. and I think he there was maybe sixteen. He said, and only four people published the press information. Yeah. So 
and Riste was kind of upset about that, right? Um, then I kind of looked at that. I'm like, well, that, then I just kind of went all over that, right? <laughs> so I want to talk a little about that. And again, this ain't to beat Riste up. Yeah. Okay. He was upset at me. Okay. He was upset at me. He's like, I could take you off the list. I'm like, dude, we've done right by you all these years. If you want to do that, it's your choice. I'm not going to worry. He's, like, he's, gonna... take, he's taking off off the list. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we're, take, we're taking the bullet for that. One. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So the first, the first point that we brought up was to risk day. And these are some things. This, we felt what was sent out was not a press release. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think it's important to understand there's a difference between press information and a press release. I think press information is you're notifying someone in the media that you have, you, you have something coming out and you can engage with them in a conversation to some extent to report on that. And you're going to write an article on that. Right. A press release is basically more structured and it has the majority of that information there. Um, and a lot of people have chosen to basically take the press releases and repost them but a lot of people haven't, right? Yeah. So, for example, I tend to work off, I'm fine with press information because news is the primary thing on Coop, but there's other things that people that don't do news, there's only about three or four of us that do the news to a, a deep level. Yeah. W would you put developing pallets in that category? No, we are not a news for first right. Uh, right. media organization. Right. Um, the, the problem I had was that it was almost like Riste sent that out with the hope that everyone was going to print that, right? Right. And what it was, is it just was very loose information that you can put it together. If you're a news guy, you're going to put it together. Yeah. But if you're, if you're not a guy who's focused on news, you're, you're probably not going to do it. Yeah. However, that I was trying to say to him, that information still needs to be sent out to every media person because that's how media people are going to know about your brand. Like maybe they're not going to choose to print it on their website, but um, that's how you create brand awareness. Um, yeah. I mean, that was just my opinion. He kind of got a little defensive on that. Like he, it was almost like he was expecting people to print that press release. I'm like press information. It wasn't really like that. Yeah, I mean, um, the way I explained it to him in the thread was that um, for the or for the for the sites that are news driven such as right. you have right. wheel, there might be a couple others. Um, they, you know, that's kind of a, you're just seeding them with uh, kind of the point that they need to start uh, engaging to right. acquire more information so that right. they can write up a, an article on such a thing. Right. But developing palettes and many other of the cigar media sites don't really necessarily rewrite uh, press releases or write unique stories around release information. They will pretty much just kind of uh, do a cut and paste press release, kind of uh, just informing their readership, sure. not necessarily doing right. anything different. Um, and I think that's how the majority of cigar media kind of works. So yeah. I was trying to explain to him that like, when you send um, very uh, minimal information, uh, you know, pretty much blend right. info, maybe uh, Vitola info, pricing, right. and that's it. Um, you know, the percentage of return that you got is about what you should expect um, right. for that type of a thing. Yep. If you send a press release that is already pre-written and stuff like that, it, it's very easy to work on. It, but for the sites that don't focus on, on, you know, writing news articles, it's easier for them to share that information. You'll get much of much more of a, a widespread share in regards to that. So I think yeah. you have to, under, have to understand how the different organizations work. It's not that anybody's neglecting him or pushing him off because they don't no. like whatever he's doing. It's just that that's just not what those brands do. Yeah. And it was at first when, when, when I mentioned that, he's like, Oh, you were one of the guys who did it. I'm like, yeah, but I had a problem. What you said to the other guys who, and you put it on your, you put it on your company's Facebook page. Right. Like, yeah. But you're not understanding why this is important. Like, I mean, there are people, I mean, here's what I'll say. The people who don't do press releases are when the reviews are written and you're trying to get background on your product, they're the ones that have more errors in it. Um, I can tell you that I can tell you that straight out. Yep. I can tell you straight out that that's, that is always the case every time. So it's, it's up, it's up to you. I mean, if, if you want to do that and some companies are fine with that and others aren't right. Um, 
you know, I tend to, if someone's taking the time to do a structured press release or give me press information, it's going to be, um, it's going to be because, you know, I'm going to give them priority. There's just no way because they've taken the time to do that for me. Yeah. And if they take the time to do that for me, I'm going to respond back to them. Um, Riste, like I said, he's always been good about sending that information. For me, it's been fine. But like I said, it's not a one size. I think he's expecting a one size fit all there. And I can tell you, I've had companies look for this and I'm not saying Rich, they kind of, maybe he kind of thought I said this to him. There are companies that have, that do use this as free advertising. There's no way around it. Right. Sure. I didn't think that was the case, what he was doing, but no, I can tell you, I, I don't think so. Yeah. But I mean, I, I get some ridiculous things like, Hey, we're having a buy, buy four, get one free. And it's a press release. Like, no. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and the other thing I'll say is, you know, with, with the press, I have, because my website's news driven, I try to have a consistent format for the majority of my stories. So that, mm -hmm. so they are going to be rewritten. It is, it is a lot of work to one, write these in your own style, make sure it matches the press release and make sure it's grammatically correct and spelling correct right. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, um, it's, everyone doesn't have that type of bandwidth to do that. I, right. So, so I thought it was a little, I thought it was a little unfair uh, on that, but I thought it was an interesting topic that that's the first time I heard a manufacturer bitch that the media wasn't doing something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like that was the whole thing. I was like, and uh, you know, like I said, he's, I hope he's not mad at me. And, uh, but if he is, that's his choice. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to beg someone for, for news. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, he responded to me by saying, "Well, I'll just take you off the list, and you don't have to worry that, about it." That, I don't I, like, understand. Not, that wasn't like I didn't engage with you that way to like have an argument. I was just trying to share with you why you probably got that, you know, four out of sixteen return, yeah. um, and is that you just kind of went to an extreme. So you know, but Risty and I have gone back and forth many, right, many right. times he, and yeah, in and person he, and whatever. And so you yeah, know, I'm hoping that this is just kind of his, you know process and we, we you know go on from there so yeah yeah i mean that's you know again that's that's what i'll say on that too um you know it's like um you know that's just that's just the way it is it's just you know i mean the the, the thing that you know, where i get the most frustrated is we've seen this happen this week um let's send this to three guys and, and not send this to the other guys and oh by the way you send a press release to three guys who don't cover news about right. your company um, that, that's the stuff that, that drives me crazy. The news guys should be at a minimum being get this. Sometimes it's a, here's the other thing. Some, I don't know what, I didn't look at the list of the media you sent this list. You may not be sending it to the right guys easy. So you should be really, you know, you should, you should definitely make sure the guys who are covering the news are on there. Um, and the guys who are supporting your brand are on there. Um, um, that, that's what I would, but that's where I also see a lot of times it's not that companies do a bad job writing press releases the distribution piece. And I've seen this with a few companies is horrendous as well. Yeah. Yep. So that was, that was that with Riste. Uh, like I said, hopefully he's okay with that. Um, yeah. I only, like I said, I think, I think both of us have done very good by his brand and we will Absolutely. continue to do that. Yeah. We've, we've all I think yeah. we've supported him very well yep. in yep. to covering yeah. his stuff. So yeah. And, and Riste, if you want a, uh, a seminar on press releases and stuff, I'm happy to do it free of charge to you. You don't even have to give me samples for that. Um, but you don't have to do it. Like I said, that's your choice. You don't have to do it. But I think if you're communicating, that's a really good sign. And, and I'm encouraged that he's been communicating over the years. I hope he doesn't change his mind on that yet. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to wrap up this show. It feels weird. Yeah, it does feel weird. Yeah, that, 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 yeah, that was fun with Manuel. That was fun <laughs> yeah. with Manuel. That was, oh, uh, yeah, man. We could have gone with Manuel for hours and hours. And yeah, hours. And, and like, yeah, it was just a lot with that. So, uh, yeah, he was cool. So that was good. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be next week. Um, I want to announce next week's show. So uh, we're keeping the bar high with our guests. We're going to be back interviewing someone from the Dominican Republic next week. Uh, Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. Uh, will be making his Thursday debut. That will be a 9 o'clock show next week. I got Ernesto to kind of do it a little later there. So, um, so yeah, that will be a 9 o'clock start time next week. Um, and then on primetime jukebox, we have our Battle of the Bands pregame show for the championship, Led Zeppelin versus Pink Floyd. Wow. Uh, so you can want to tune into that. And then Dave Garofalo is going to do special edition with Bear and I on Tuesday. Do you guys so, have a topic, uh, kind of a topic in mind with Dave? It's going to be more of a general, general discussion okay. with him, but I think we're going to hit a lot of, I think we're going to hit COVID with him a lot too. Okay. Cause I want to get into, uh, you know, some of the things he does, he did uniquely there. And the other thing probably I want to hit, I mean, we probably, Dave's story has been told a lot, so I don't think we need to retell it, but, um, I was very interested in the way he kind of had to adjust with COVID. Um, not that I, I, I know we beat COVID to death, but as a retailer, I think yeah. he really took a sense of urgency with that um, more so than anybody I've seen. 
Um, probably put Jeff and Abe in that category too, but you know, maybe I'm leaving somebody, but, but in terms of the top sense of urgency, Dave was out there, he was standing out there with signs and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah. um, we'll probably hit a lot of that piece as well. Um, um, if and I don't, you know, I'm not on the show, so I don't want to kind of guide where you go, but, um, if you get a chance when you're talking to him about that, um, I'd re- be very interested in his, uh, thoughts in regards to, um, you know, if there even was a trade show, what would have it looked like, you know, coming out of the pandemic or what do you, what, you know, what does it look like with these um, kind of virtual trade shows going on through the year? Like, does he see, you know, what kind of companies does he see ready to buy versus kind of just kind of keeping the doors open? And I know he's in a different kind of a scenario than some of the uh, single store shops, but I'd just be curious on his thoughts because he's usually has a pretty good um, view in regards to, you know, even you know different markets, different retailer sizes. Yeah, that's so a good what's point. Better for the retail side of the industry. So. Yeah, that's a good point too, because obviously he has a lot of. He wrote a book on retail things, and I I wonder if that's changed the book with him um, in terms of what he's done. Yeah. So that is that's something I definitely want to hit with him um, as well, because I'm sure he's made some adjustments to his business model going forward that he never yeah. could have to make. Right. So um, and, and uh, I'm sure he loves that he had a you know on, an online presence when that occurred. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, we talked about how many retailers wish they had a website that was operational. Yep. I, I saw, th- I saw three different retailer categories: ones who had it in operation, ones yep. who didn't, and then ones who had it like shoestring. It was like connected together, and they had like five products on on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, yeah. So yeah, that would be that. And then we have Ernesto next uh, Thursday there. Yep. Um. Nice. So that should be pretty good. We have actually a good lineup coming up as we'll we'll be unveiling oh, yeah. some of the get. Yeah, we we've uh. People have, uh, people want to do the show. So, yep. Yep. All right. That's going to wrap up primetime episode 143 into the annals of history for Thursday, June 18th, 2020. Uh, we'll see everybody for our shows next week. Have a great night, everybody. Take care. See you guys.